Welcome to Marlow House Presents. I'm Andrew Marlow. I'm Monica Marlow. And this is... Uh, this is this is May the 4th be with you. Yeah, May the 4th be with you. <laughs> We're doing some live play Cypher. Um, a little while ago, uh, James Walls finished running uh, an all Ewok adventure over on YouTube. And it, the baton has been passed to us here on Twitch. And... Um, we will be here, Marlowe House will be here for quite some time, um, but for the moment, we are joined by two special guests, uh, Randy and Keith. Uh, hi, guys. Yeah, the, the, if, the problem is, is we're looking at a monitor that's to our right, right. and our camera is right in front of us, so... Because, yeah, we, we're set up for... Later tonight. Later tonight, too, <laughs> um, because our, our next event will have live people at the table. Uh, All right, so as we do this, uh, we are playing with Keith Keppel, who writes uh, for writes Star Wars uh, content for FFG, and Randy Price, who... Randy, what is your company's name? Don't you do... What is it? Oh, Two Kings Games. And, and you do uh, third-party publishing for uh, Pathfinder and other stuff, right? Those are the two main right right now. We're working on our own system right now, but uh, we're not quite there yet. Okay, so uh, Two Kings, they do third-party uh, Pathfinder and Fifth Ed. They're working on some stuff of their own as we're getting their sound up and ready. Uh, their characters... It should be up and running now. Okay. Can we get a confirmation from the Hello? chat? Hello. Uh, it'll take a minute. Or three or four, apparently. Yeah, sometimes it's really bad. The live can be terrible. Up, they can hear them now. Okay, great. Which I thought. Oh. Easy fix. Yeah. It just took me a minute to do it. Because we had to restart everything a couple of times to get through technology issues, and I didn't double-check my old settings. All right. So Randy's playing a Jedi, and Keith is playing uh, at our Talon. The, the Which if, if squad people, leader. Right. He's a squad leader, and if you are in chat and you happen to know who at our Talon is, shh. <laughs> It'll become what, important uh, later. Andrew, what rank do I hold? Um, you're probably all right. So my 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 military knowledge is sadly a lot less than I would like it to be, and I was going to do some research on this. I didn't get a chance to. Um, I was I'm because I'm not certain how the Republic does their their ranking. They use a naval ranking. He'd probably be a lieutenant. If he's allowed to fly combat missions, like the minimum rank would probably be a lieutenant. He could be like a commander, would be a higher rank, but like that. It's probably more like a commander then. That's what okay. I was thinking. Because that's actually where I was leaning, but I was afraid to say that without verifying it with somebody who has some knowledge of the military. So then, does that make with a does that make Randy uh, Cameron? That probably makes you guys lieutenants. lieutenants. Okay. Well, at least makes you a lieutenant, makes him a Jedi Knight. Oh, uh, that's true. Outside that order. Yeah, I mean, the, the Jedi are sort of outside the command structure, right? And, right. Uh, and, right. Uh, Monica, is your, uh, uh, is, is Ansu a, uh, an independent character or a, a military character? Um, you know, that doesn't actually appear here that's anywhere. That's because you don't have a written background. Because I don't have a written background, so I'm just oh, going to go ahead and make this up so on they, the fly so, like yeah. we do. It's like we do this for a living or something. Um, make, make them up on the fly, because we'll that's, that's what Randy's going to have to do, too. We're going to go ahead and say that she is part of the military simply because it really doesn't make a lot of sense for her not to be, um, given the structure of the adventure as I understand it. There really isn't a reason to not be traveling as a military envoy of some kind. Or my... So I kind of have a follower. I have a minion. You nice. have a follower who does her own thing. She <laughs> right. she she is fast, and that is fast-witted and fast on the draw, so... Okay. <laughs> hothead. Right. Hothead. There you go. So, because I know you guys are both new at Cypher, I'm just going to kind of cover this. This also works for the audience, because they don't necessarily know what, what exactly it is we're doing. Um, all the difficulties are rated 1 to 10, um, and the target numbers are three times the difficulty. And so we'll, we'll kind of work through that. But basically, 
the idea is to get your difficulty down as low as it, as low as possible um, so that you can actually attempt it because if I give you a difficulty that is you know a six it means you're looking for 18s on the die if I give you a seven you can't get it at all without doing something to lower the difficulties so skills will lower the difficulty by up to two steps one step for being trained a second step for being specialized and I believe some of you guys have uh, at least some specializations on some of the sheets um, you can further lower difficulties by applying effort because attributes in cypher work differently than they do in most other games attributes in cypher are not something you roll against they are something that modify your role by being spent um, so if you spend points out of your pool uh, three for the first level of effort and two for any additional level of effort um, you can lower the difficulty for uh, by one step for each level of effort, effort applied which sounds a lot more complicated than it actually really is once you get into playing um, one of the big mechanics for this game too is that you spend experience points when you get them um, you guys can all mark down that you have one experience point to start with um, I will be awarding experience point for good RP, for uh, discovery. Um, so Andrew, just to, to clarify, the, the three attributes, might, speed, and intellect. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, if there's a difficulty six thing and I want to lower it to difficulty three, I could spend like three intellect? To it's three it. intellect would lower it by one step, and then oh, another oh, okay. two would lower it by two steps. Um, if you have, the other thing I should have mentioned, do you have uh, an edge in any of your, and you should have it at least one. It'll be in one of these boxes next to It'll be next to, to the... where it says pool. Yes, mine is intellect. So when you go to spend effort in intellect, you automatically get one. So some of your powers so it'll will cost require... You one less, it'll cost you one less point out of your pool. And your powers that require an activation... You basically automatically activate, but you can only use. Well, that, you just you cost it costs one less. Well, it yeah, it costs. Automatically cost, activate. Well, you're right, but I mean, for practical purposes in game, it. Right on. I kind of remember the, it. But the total pool, the edge. total cost. Once you, you figure out what your total cost is going to be for that action, and it's lowered by that edge. Okay. So, we'll kind of get there when we as we do things, and we'll 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 gently walk everybody through it as needed. Um, on your sheets, there should be full descriptions of all the abilities. If you have any questions, let me know. But I try to make these sheets as user-friendly as possible. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what you've given me here. I know you told me, but... So, um, as we start, imagine... Uh, hot, dry desert. Um, it's there are twin suns rising up, scorching the air, and we find an older version of Adar Talon in a speeder heading towards Tachi Station on Tatooine. And as, as Adar Talon approaches the small community uh, of traders and things, there are star, you know, you can see the, the, the silhouettes of a Star Destroyer in the sky. Um, there's troop transports being lowered, uh, you know, big. The, the big shuttles, Imperial shuttles, are, are, are docking at the space station, and there's an enormous hubbub of Imperial activity. I buy all the power converters. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keith, you've been in hiding for some time. Because although I told you we were starting in the Republic here, we're gonna we're gonna kind of flash forward just a touch. Um, you're trying to keep a low profile, 
stay out of the way of the Empire. And yet, here they are in, in large numbers. Are you going to continue into town, or are you going to, like, you know, skirt back, double around, try to figure what out? What I'd like to do is uh, take a moment, uh, you know, reduce myself to a safe speed. Take a moment and look at how they're deploying from the Star Destroyers. Is it, a, like, a search pattern they're about to launch, or are they just... Uh, uh, like dropping a garrison and uh, it looks uh, like it looks like you're dropping a garrison so they're not necessarily looking for me or anything like that maybe not yeah but in that case i will gladly continue to get town. okay it's someone familiar with imperial deployment protocols you know right um so you go into town and it's a little nerve-wracking because you know somebody might recognize you I and mean, several years have passed and you know. but maybe i can wear like a scarf sure like a sure. po, po Dameron, like, yeah. style scarf, maybe? Um, you get into Tachi Station, and it's pretty clear fairly quickly that something's been going on. Um, there are a lot of rumors flying. Uh, evidently, uh, the Lars farm was recently destroyed by sand people. And there's a lot of talk about droids. Um... But mostly the garrison here is basically just firming up an imperial presence. Um, right on. So things are not particularly particularly good, and you kind was of the, think. Was, was there a reason I was coming into town? Did I have a goal of some kind? What would you have been coming into town for? Do you think you've got a farm? Uh, yeah, just probably supplies, I guess. Buy yeah. all the converters. <laughs> buy all the I power converters. He really might be here to buy all the converters. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, and now I know the Empire's looking for some droids. Mm -hmm. um, do I have any, like, uh, um, contacts in town, or have I been, like, a shut-in? You've probably got a few contacts in town. So, uh, maybe I'll track down the, uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, old war buddies or something and see if I could find out what's going on. Okay. Um, you do actually have one of your old war buddies is, is in town. Um, he's a... And, you know, for the life of me, I don't remember what they call this, this race. Um, I think it's... Let's see if I can... By the way, while you're flipping, do I need, like, dice for this? You only need a, a D20, D20 and a D6. Why don't you look and I'll answer those questions. Because <laughs> I can do both. <laughs> yeah, um, there's rarely any other time we would need other dice, and I have a bunch here, so... Okay, well, I have those, then. So, he's one of the... It, it, his name is Vitor Shrike, and he's sure. one of the insectoid aliens that has the... Uh, like the big breathing apparatus. He was, they, it's the same, same species like as one of the bounty hunters. A Gan. He's a Gan. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I, I is is he famous enough to actually uh, refer to himself by name or does he just call himself Gan in the third person as they tend to? Um, he probably calls himself Vitor. Because he's a named NPC. I would say at this point he is probably enough, an, well enough known in his own way <laughs> that he calls himself Vitor, although lately um, he has probably gone back to calling himself Dan. Okay. Um, so I will, of course, call him Vitor, as I would, uh, as we serve together so bravely to defend uh, uh, the space lanes near his homeworld from uh, separatist aggression. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I I'll go visit with uh, uh, Vitor and see if... Uh, he, he knows uh, what's going on with all the, the deployment and stuff. I tell him, oh yeah, it looks like it looks like they're establishing uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, force build up, you know, along the uh, the Jenlin Waste and Moss Eisley over there. Uh, have you heard anything? Something about droids and yeah, a freighter. I mean, droids and a freighter. Yes. So a uh, freighter. Uh, Blasted its way out of Moss Eisley. Oh, I missed all the fun stuff. Uh, all right, right and on. And now that this has happened, they're 
the Empire is taking a firmer grip on Tatooine. Being that me and Vitor both served the Republic, which became the Empire, what are uh, what are Vitor's uh, views of the Empire? Do I know? He's not fond of it. He left with you. Um, at this point in your careers, you are both presumed dead because sure. you have faked you faked your death. And he actually stayed on Tatooine for a long time with you, um, but. He now only kind of stops back in periodically to check on you and to check on some, you know, other interests that he has formulated over the years of being here. Um, but sorry, he, the quiet retirement was not for him, and oh, so he okay. is he is gone out and about. He's not running around with those crazy partisans I hear so much about, is he? No, not yet. <laughs> Not uh, uh, running around with Saw Gerrera blowing up uh, <laughs> civilian uh, adjacent uh, uh, Imperial forces. No, nope. no. Or uh, or or the other the uh, not even the other group of the rebels. The, oh, the talking group that doesn't do anything. Right. <laughs> wow. So maybe 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 we should. I I mean they could sure use somebody who's done something other than talk. I think. Uh, I think uh, I think doing something would be good. Doing anything would be good at this point, because what I mean, what could the Empire even want here on Tatooine? Like it's a it's a dust ball. What? Yeah. They, what could You're the, planning the, it. The cost benefit possibly be of putting a star destroyer in orbit way out here? There's nothing here. He looks at you and it, it, it says, "And what would anybody want with the ghost?" of the Blue Harvest. Everything is wanted by someone. I, I At which point... Was yeah, I, I, we're having... There's some, there's some noise in the background here. He says, and what would someone have wanted with the ghost of the Blue Harvest? Someone always wants something. And that kind of takes you back. And so with that, we're going to kind of fade out and... We, we close in on a younger Adar Talon, um, who is flanked by two other individuals um, aboard. I feel like I, had, I should have had like a fake beard I could take off and be the younger Adar Talon now. <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice if Andrew would have like, oh, I don't know, warned us he was going to do this. What? <laughs> oh, and by the way, we're going to do this quick cutback. <laughs> Flashback scene. Flash forward, and then we're going to cut back to the actual adventure. Okay. So we we cut to a younger Adar Talon, um, who at this point is being flanked by two other individuals, one in uh, Jedi robes and the other, how do you dress on it? Uh, well, my character would be dressed in an appropriate military fashion. Um, Unless we are undercover, in which case my character would be dressed appropriately undercover. So probably, probably military. <laughs> uh, Randy, is there anything that you would say your character wears in particular? Any particular colors that your Jedi robes might be in? Or... I'm going to say he has blue robes. Okay. So everybody has brown or black. I, I, I want a little bit more fashion to my, my Jedi state. So it matches your, your lightsaber like in your yes. eyes? Yes. Are you, it's, it's, yes, it's... You like milk, it's so it goes with that. Correct. <laughs> Randy, are you human? Not you, your character, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Although, um, just to make sure. You know. you, yes. You, yes. Okay. I did not divulge that on the sheets because I was going to leave that up to everybody else. Um, I'm going to say he's human. Okay. Because Cipher doesn't handle races terribly differently. The species are 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 what they are i mean you can kind of build your character however you want and go from there so if everybody's human that's fine with me too that's fine i'm happy being human it works for me okay so um you cut to the three of you as you're um, moving through the corridors of um a small cap the small capital ship that your 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 flight is currently docked with um, 
you're kind of between missions. And then as you're walking through, you are page to uh, briefing room C. All right. Upon arrival, uh, there are a number of um, uh, officers gathered around, and you are told that um, a distress signal has been picked up. Um, in an adjacent sector of space and they want you to go check it out because there isn't anything there isn't anything there there shouldn't be anything there um there's no active space lanes um it is an asteroid debris field okay i probably just got back from a patrol so i'm like eating some nutrient paste pudding uh <laughs> While I got, you know, paged over the 1MC or whatever they call the, the mm-hmm. intercom on a rebel ship. And uh, um, so I'll just be in there listening, eating my, my nutrient paste. Keith knows more about this right. this universe than I do. I feel really sh- uh, ashamed of my I lack of knowledge. I aircraft carrier life because I've done that too. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so the... the uh, the Republic officers give you your orders. They say, you know, go fly out there, take a look around, see what you can see, uh, report back. Engage do we, have, do we have any intelligence of any movement, any enemy movement at all? or There shouldn't be any enemy it? movement there. Um, it, it, like I said, it, it is supposed to be a, a sector that is basically dead space. It's off the yeah. beaten path. There's an asteroid belt there. Which means there might be a reason for, it might be a place for somebody to be hiding. But if they were hiding, why would they set up a distress beacon? That does seem a little strange to set up a Probably distress beacon. pirates hitting a smuggler or something, but we'll check it out. Right, and pirates are not not unheard of. So, and it's not you know even though you're in the middle of a, a war with the separatists, it's not necessarily good to let the pirates run amok either so the, the sure. republic still puts down piracy when they find it all right i will uh, flip open my little wrist based holocron that all jedi have it's like standard sure. jedi issue i mm-hmm. think yeah and uh i will try to contact the jedi council or whoever the duly representative 911 version of the jedi council is okay And, and who, who, who's who's on duty right now? I guess. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just asking Andrew a question. We're getting a lot of so, noise. So, the uh, there is a young Rodan Jedi, basically on the uh, the the holocron comms. Um, I mean, he's. So, uh, did you did you need to be directed to somebody? I was just wondering if the, there was any more intelligence about this particular area of space that we're, we've been ordered to go to. Um, I can check to see if there's anything in the data files. Thank you. And there's a little, there's a there's a short pause, and it comes back. It's quiet. I don't see anything there. There's no base or established area, any kind of like uh, kind of urban area there. Uh-uh. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. No problem. Viz out. <laughs> Viz out. Viz out. All right. So, um, so uh, can I just ask a few, a few, like, are we in, we're in the outer rim somewhere, I yes. guess, like, near, yes. how far away from, like, the, the front lines of, of the war are we, like, right now? Uh, you are not on the front lines currently. Um, you're within fairly easy dispatch range of it. Um, right on. A day or two at the most. Okay. But, um, 
at the moment your current assignment is has mostly been you know pirate thumping you know for sure there there have been a couple of there there have been a couple of worlds in the area um that were more uh more separatist aligned but hadn't gone quite that way that are part of why you're deployed here but they're quiet for the moment okay um, they basically been cowed by the, the sheer number of republic victories so uh just to be clear on our orders our orders are to, to scout out and find what's going on yep scout uh, what... scout and report is the primary objective if okay. if it seems like it's something you can engage with, engage. So so we do have like freedom to engage based on my uh, 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 authority, right? I can right. kind of make that call in the field. Yes, you can. Right on. And, that... and you're 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 basically uh, you've been told uh, in for for previous missions that this is. They're they're looking at your at your career closely, and you are on a on a fast fast progression as long as you you know keep bringing in results. For sure. Yeah, you know, I'm Maverick. I'm the pilot prodigy at our town. Currently. <laughs> uh, right on. Well, uh, uh, let's let's uh, mount up. We're fueled up and ready to go. Uh, how long till our birds are ready to fly? Uh, 15 minutes. We will okay. prioritize the, uh, the ground crews to get them going. Deck crews. All right, well, I'll turn to my two subordinates. Have they have they assigned these two to me, I imagine? Yes. I would say yes. they've, they've, they've already been with you. Okay. For a bit. So you're just like my team, and it's like, yeah. you know, talons, talons, let's, let's <laughs> roll out. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to uh, work on the name, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so while we're going down, can I check a, a data pad and just uh, uh, maybe familiarize myself with uh, the area where the distress beacon's coming out? Sure. Is there anything uh, I can learn about the distress beacon? Like maybe is it a, a an escape um, pod distress beacon or a, a certain signal that might? suggest it's coming from a certain group like a give, mining vessel go ahead and give me an easy intellectual so we're going to call this yeah, a check. simple check so you're only looking for difficulty three if you can okay. get that drop by one step that'll be uh, uh, target number three if you can get that drop by one step it'll be automatic well i am trained in astro navigation which is sort of like i'll give you that way regions uh, of space yeah, you've and got all that. Astro navigation and you've got ship systems. So, um, it is a cargo carrier's distress beacon. Okay. Um, it is a cargo carrier called the Blue Harvest. The Blue Harvest. Um, with that information, you can easily access um, some Republic databases. The Peru of Ships and Services, boss. Mm -hmm. um, that pulls up a uh, military supply ship. Mm. It, working it, for who? Working for, for the Republic. That went missing uh, at the very start of the war, so like two or three years ago. Okay. So th this could potentially be a, a, a trap if the ship was captured. Could uh, be. They, they could be using it. So I'm going to immediately sort of... Uh, uh, while we're sort of in the hangar bay waiting for uh, uh, this whole, uh, our ships to get ready, I'm going to go ahead and calm my uh, immediate superior and fill him in on what I found with, like, the barest minimum of effort. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, maybe maybe some of the intel guys up there can <laughs> figure this do their freaking job. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I'll let him know that, hey, man, this might be a trap, uh, maybe, if possible, um, he could prioritize uh, uh, a second element uh, as reinforcements in case this goes like way bad. This is all right. We've got we, we already have a secondary flight uh, on as your backup. I should have told you about while we were briefing you because I wasn't thinking about it. But Andrew just thought of it, so if he's going to tell us now, 
Yeah, he's like, I've already got this. There's a secondary flight already, already in, in uh, prepared to be your backup, but they're gonna stay out. The alert because five again, launch. Yeah. Because your 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 again your primary objective is to uh, scout and report. Right, right, right. You're a smaller group. We've got a larger group uh, set as immediate backup if you need them. Okay. Um, I feel good. Uh... Master Viz, do you have any uh, uh, intuition and feelings about the... Uh, I mean, I share all this information with my team, obviously. Right. would say they have need to know. It's all very mysterious right now. One moment while I reach out with the Force and see if I can detect life on this area. I'm not sure I'm strong enough to do that, but I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. I thought um, you would get a bad feeling about it. <laughs> Probably. I gave you a sensibility, didn't I? Yeah, let me look here. There's a danger sense. I don't think that applies right now. That's though. like the yeah. same. You 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 don't have like all of the Jedi stuff yet. Um, you've definitely been a a, a lightsaber, uh, heavy training okay. on the lightsaber route. Um, Hit him with the flashlight. You do have some. You do have some sensibilities, like the danger sense. And I think you have a cipher that works as, as like, remote viewing for some place you've been. Um, but I haven't been there yet, so I can't right. use far side. And you do, have so, you do have some other sensing stuff, because you've got a uh, uh, a low-level power that's, like, all the Jedi things. Um, right. Just, what is that? just lightly. It's well, I'm going to try to... Oh, okay. my, my two companions don't know any better, so I'm going to try to fake this, like, mysterious... Like you, you do have... You this do, is why like no I said, you. you. I know, right? <laughs> you do have a little bit with the uh, the hedge magic, but it, it doesn't quite go go very far. So that that uh, basic Jedi training, um, right? You it's, just it's became a, a master bit... a couple weeks ago. A night. Maybe it's a night. Just a I'm sorry. Of a the night. Near future, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, I close my eyes and so I... you do a little bit. So give me an intellect roll. Okay. Um, what's it? What's my difficulty? Your difficulty is going to be a five. So you're okay, looking so for Okay, so I rolled a twelve. Uh, so I've got a... Uh, and... Um, is he training like insight or did anything? Did you have anything in your skills? Uh, my skills, let's see here. I knew I should bring these sheets off so I found Yeah. They're in the middle, underneath your tier and effort. Skills are right below yeah, that. Yeah, it's just, uh, just general force training. General force training? I'll give you that. Training? Training I will give you that. That works for me. So that lowers it to a 12 is your difficulty. So you got it right on the nose. Okay. Um, so with, with that, um, you feel something dark side out there. Something, something in the future. Yeah, you know, it kind of out. There's a, a nebulous sort of doom. There's something, something dark out there. Uh, I have a something. bad feeling about this mission. I say. <laughs> and like for it, every mission, it's, it, it's, it doesn't it, mean anything anymore. Well, I really feel at this time there's something about the dark side related to this this area we're headed into. Um, and instead of kind of picking up on the on the future, you kind of touch a little bit on the past, and you can hear the screams of dying. Oh, we must we must hurry. They are dying. I hear I can hear their voices. Well, we keep standing here talking. We're never going to get there. Let's We're go waiting for the ships to get ready. That's all. Right. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I had to go upstairs. I figured we'd finish that by now. <laughs> We need so, fuel to go yeah. anywhere. Yeah, so. so they were fueling when they were doing their, their stuff. Oh, okay. Were being fueled and getting ready. But All these right. quick turnaround missions are killing me. Like, my flight suit's stinking like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> yes, I, I would believe. I am standing close enough to you to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry about that. No, so, that's okay. Just so you glad all... you're not a co-pilot for this mission. You know? Yeah. Did that. <laughs> to do, you, be fair, do you all have anything else that you want to do before we cut to... Uh... I've done plenty, I think, so. No. No, I'm just eager, <laughs> eager to get down there because... Okay. Uh, real quick, though, just so everybody knows, in, 
think since I know we didn't go through um, the the uh, cipher system primer, your ciphers are actually the equivalent of like potions or uh, scrolls or something. Except so, we're using subtle ciphers, so they're not actually. Well, but they function the same way. They're only a one off. So if you choose to use your use your cipher, it will go away. So. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use them. I'm just saying to be aware. It's, they're, they are they are unique one-off character abilities. Yes. Board it forever uh, and never use it. Got yeah, it. no, that's that's exactly <laughs> what I'm not saying. But yeah, that's exactly what happens. In most so games, I guess it, far side. <clears throat> no, no you, you you can't use far sight on something you've never seen. That's actually. That's okay. one. He's got a far sight one where he can... I was protected by the, the, the oh. of fate, yes. Oh, I didn't realize it was a cipher, too. <laughs> he's got a cipher that, that lets him see signs that he's already seen. Right, so it's not the same. That's right. what he just did. He yeah. actually just used his yeah, Jedi he, abilities. Yeah, you just used your Jedi abilities. Right. It's not your cipher. But if you wanted to <clears> see what was going on back here at the base later, and you felt like you, you weren't going to be able to do it successfully, you could use your cipher. Or if you wanted to see what was going on in the throne room where we had just been and you wanted to spy on whoever was in there then you could use it for that like, oh i knew it they're oh, talking okay. about my blue robes yeah. exactly <laughs> all right you're like clairvoyance yeah. i guess right so i i tried to give everybody subtle ciphers that would kind of fit with what they were playing um normally in a cipher system game you would spend them like candy and you would get them just as quickly um for this one because it's a little bit harder to pass things out you might want to hang on to them because I'm not certain I will be able to, to just drop them back on you as easily. We got it covered. Um, so, with that in mind, we will cut to uh, your three starfighters arriving in the asteroid field, in the debris field. And you drop out of hyperspace in the uh, appointed coordinate, or near the appointed coordinate. It's not right on them, so you can maneuver up on them yeah no point in being like hey y'all we're here yeah it's Sky how close do you want to get back, how close do you guys want to get i want to be as far back as possible would be my orders what they actually okay. do probably isn't up to me but but i would want us to come out of hyperspace like on one far side of the asteroid field so that they can't detect us okay whatever's happening so you do that you drop out and <laughs> Um, you guys maneuver through the asteroid field. Now we're going to basically do this as a stealth roll. Um, okay. But instead of using stealth, well, if you've got stealth, I will let you use stealth to some degree. Um, but we're really doing like a piloting check. And you're going to kind of, I'm assuming you're going to kind of move from like asteroid to asteroid and kind of move up and scan the area as you come up as unobtrusively as possible. That's well, the move, I think. Yeah. Uh, for reasons that would be obvious at any other time, um, at the start of the day, I took piloting as my skill. Okay. Yeah, I did as well. I would probably want us to just like, hey, you know, follow me. Okay. My uh, my uh, character type allows me to have what's called a flex skill. So once a day, at the beginning of the day, I get to choose what my focused skill is right on. so that would be what i would have been doing is preparing myself for the day right re re reviewing <laughs> the manual for the uh it from the glove box of my ship right well how do starfighters work again <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> all right all right oh yeah you gotta do got it yeah because everybody can attempt any skill everybody's skilled in everything and, you know can you can always anything. try but how skilled you are depends on the actual skills. And then if you're if you're playing a, a character that has flex skill, you get to pick that once per day. So um, everybody go ahead and give me a piloting check. And just roll a D twenty. Just okay. roll a D twenty. If you want to put any effort onto it, you may. Well I rolled a nineteen. Well I guess you don't need Ooh. to do that. I rolled Um actually with his nineteen um, that comes with a, a special benefit, uh -huh. so each of you can lower your difficulty by one step. Well, that's good. And I will affect that out. Because I only rolled a six, and a, so it's okay. lowered by two. Peter guy. So it's still... So how did you I'm do that? I'm going to put in some effort. What? Sorry. I'm going to put in some effort. Okay. 
So I see effort. I have an effort of two. So does that does that figure into it? Uh, that means you can apply up to two levels of effort. Okay, and each level of effort, I, I is the first level things? is three. The second level is two. So that if you apply both levels, it's going to cost you a grand total of five, less mm. your edge. All right, I will put uh, just one level of effort. So that's three. That cost me three. And if you have an edge, that would lower it by one more. Okay. But you said yours is an intellect, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so, you, so it's going to cost you three out of your speed pool. All right. And then go ahead and roll your die. Yep, I, rolled, I got a 16 on the die. Okay. Apparently it's a good thing I took piloting. <laughs> so... The three of you very carefully maneuver your way through the debris field, and all of you pick up on your scanners about the same time um, another debris field inside the debris field. Yeah. This one is definitely a starship. Okay. So like a, like a, a busted up starship inside the yeah. asteroid field? Yes. I'd like to okay. check the radio. Is are we still getting the signal? And this is where the signal is coming from. So it's still coming. It's still active. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can tell that it basically. This is a ship that has um, three long uh, cargo containers on it normally, um, and they sit one across the top and then two across the bottom. So it almost has a triangular uh, profile down its entire length. And it's long. It's it's kind of long, like Home One was long, um, or the medical frigate. You know, it's it's okay. it's an enormous ship, um, and it has these these containers. Um, it looks like the containers are completely de destroyed. They're they're no longer existing, um, and it looks like the actual hull of the ship has been broken into about four different pieces, and then all this like loose debris. It's still hanging out right around it. So it didn't. It didn't have any kind of major ex explosive. Like everything moved away from it. It's more like it broke. Yeah, kind of. So it's still kind of like intact. It, yeah, there was like probably maybe it got some explosion. By an asteroid or something. It looks like there was some explosions, but a lot of them look like they might have been more contained. It probably took a lot of sustained damage over time, and then it broke down and just kind of under the forces of. Of its, of its own weight, momentum, and other things, it just kind of tore itself apart. Okay. Can, uh, uh, can maybe I even, Pardon? Can, can my, my built-in astromech, can we confirm that this is, in fact, the, the Blue's Harvest? Blue Harvest? Um, yes. This is definitely the Blue Harvest. Um, astromechs come back with, uh, as far as they can tell, it is, it is the Blue Harvest. Okay, well, uh, our next concern, I think, is to make sure this isn't a trap of some kind, at least uh, before we expose ourselves. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm going to order my uh, my team to, like, do a lap around the edge of the, the asteroid field to see if we scan for enemy fighters. All right, so go ahead and do another, sort of... do another, uh, we'll do this as a, a sort of computer check, a scan check. So okay. you are probing for... Other like vessels. as a group, does some do we all make the check or um, somebody hasn't gone for a while? Actually, I'll tell you what, go ahead and do it as a as as a single roll. Somebody have somebody do it, and then whoever else helps will lower the difficulty for the other. Well, I've so, already so we'll basically it. we'll roll we'll lower the difficulty by two automatically because okay. all three of you are doing it. I've already rolled a thirteen, so. Fair enough. You, that sounds like a good roll. Well, I didn't have to, but lowering it by two means that it's the equivalent right. of a six, so. So, um, you guys don't pick anything up. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we tried. Okay, so we're going to assume there isn't uh, a flight of separatist ships or pirate ships waiting to ambush us the second we reveal ourselves. So, uh, um, I think, uh, 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 I should, uh, it's safe to broadcast, and I'm going to uh, communicate the confirmation of the discovery of the lost ship, Blue Harvest. Okay. Uh, and as you're, base. as you're doing that, I'm going to throw out the first GM intrusion of the night, and I'm going to go ahead and throw this at Randy. 
So, Randy, add one. So you get it. So I'm gonna what, what I'm gonna so do. You're holding it, it the what, wrong oh, way. Sorry, I'm holding it the wrong way. <laughs> when I go to do an intrusion, I'm gonna hold it up at the camera like this. Okay. An intrusion gets you an experience point for yourself and an experience point that you can pass to somebody else. If you do not want the intrusion, you can tell me that you're gonna spend your own experience point. Never turn down intrusions. <laughs> you can spend your own experience point, and I won't. I won't do the intrusion. The the, the narrative right. thing won't happen. I will take mine and give the other one to uh, Talon. Okay. To the boss. Sucking up to the boss. Typical Jedi. Okay. Not really. Ow. Randy, as yes. you're kind of flying and you're, you guys are doing your sensor sweeps, um, you feel life signs. You, can, you feel something moving aboard the biggest uh, piece of debris. All right. I, uh, how, how do you, can we communicate privately? I mean, uh, without, or is it like on, can anybody hear us? You can, you can like switch scanning? between like a general channel and a, a specific channel. So you can radio anybody. You can basically whisper. All right. So I, I quote unquote whisper to my two companions. There's a life sign on, and I try to mark it on the our, my display screen and share that display screen with my two companions. Okay. There. Cool. Uh, I, I, why don't you try uh, uh, communicating with them while I finish reporting in or whatever? See if you could establish comms with uh, <laughs> the survivor or life form or whatever. All right. I focus and try to do that. Okay. You hear this like whispered voice almost. It's it, it's a very weak uh, thing come across the the, the tenuous uh, connection of the force, and it says, "Help us!" <laughs> it's not creepy at all. No, not a okay. bit. <laughs> all right. Uh, I will start maneuvering my ship towards this uh where that that place was okay I'll, I'll go with him because at this point someone needs to stay between the two <laughs> um now your your flight suits actually have some hard radiation protection okay. you can't do a whole lot of space walking in them but you could use it you can use your spacesuits to get from your cockpits to uh there's a there, you can see a breach in the side of the ship and you do have probably enough air for a couple of hours so you could get aboard and you can see a plate you can see a spot fairly close to where this the signal came from where uh, you could dock your ships dock them using your astromex to kind of hold them in place mm -hmm. and then board this this vessel this this ruined vessel that sounds like a fabulous idea. We should do that. You sure we don't just want to blow the thing up from, from here? I am sure that that's what we should do, but that, that <laughs> really kind of means that we've only played for an hour, and that kind of, you know... It's we haven't even rolled help. a lot of dice. Somebody's calling for help. Somebody's calling for help. There are people on there. That's more like daring you to help. Yeah, you're, 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 telling, <laughs> <laughs> you're telling the paladin he can't help people, so yeah. <laughs> Die. <laughs> yeah, it's probably it's probably the the dark side I've sensed earlier. It's probably like a bunch of dying dark siders or whatever that need help. Well, that's good. Then we could just make sure that we finish them off and everything's good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, if I finish uh, uh, coming in the sort of update to our situation, uh, I think the the next move while these two have already taken off and headed for the the lead ship. Can I take a path that's maybe a little slower and do a deep scan of the, the rest of the ship debris? Sure. Or anywhere else I'm detecting, like, life signs or sure. even just, like, life support go ahead, still get, Go ahead and give me another another uh, uh, ship systems check. And again, if you want to put effort on that, you can. Uh, um, I rolled a six, so I guess... I, I certainly i am skilled with all tasks involving identifying or assessing danger lies 
operation of most ship systems, I'm skilled as well. So that automatically reduces it twice, right? Yep, that's two steps. Uh, and I have such a big intellect pool. I'll go ahead and burn uh, uh, one more step. Okay. Uh, will that get me there with a six? Um, you do pick up a small fluctuation. Um, there's like a, a spike of hard radiation coming from one of the other pieces. Something on par with almost, almost with like a uh, uh, starship's engine running, but it okay. doesn't look like it should be an engine portion of the ship. So uh, um, I'll just, uh, hey, uh, uh, Talons, uh, uh, looks like we got a radiation leak coming from uh, one of the, uh, an engine reactor leak or uh, whatever, coming from uh, uh, one of the pieces of debris. Uh, shields up so that you don't take any systems damage. Okay. Oh. Oh, hold on. Oh no. Uh, so, but other. That's than, apparently a, a warning sign. We're we are about to be. <laughs> There's radiation leaking. <laughs> we're getting, radiation we're getting hit. <laughs> You're too close. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. That's all right. It happens. But otherwise, sure. I guess off. let's uh, let's let's dock. Let's check it out. Yeah, so going towards the ship and the, where the main where it looks like the main ship is still intact enough to. Yeah, the biggest chunk looks like it's mostly intact. We do have, like I said, there is a breach on the side that you guys could easily access. Okay. Uh, the ship was not really built for docking with. As big as it is, um, it is mostly for. Loading transporting, on. transporting these gigantic uh, cargo containers that typically carry, you know, uh, supplies and other Cities things. worth of food. Yeah, if there was going to be docking so like done, it would be docked in ship, those right? compartments that are no longer there. I'm sorry, what was that, Keith? You said it was a military supply ship, right? Mm -hmm. Like lost early in the Clone Wars or whatever? Yes. And the spots where you would be able to dock normally... Are, would have been in those cargo pods, so there isn't anywhere to dock on the actual body of the ship. Spacewalk. Spacewalk it is. So dock as close as we can to to reduce the amount of time we'll spend out mm -hmm. in... And the amount of distance you're going to have to travel. Right. All right. Um, all right, I'll update command on, uh, uh, you know, hey, we, we have a... Our ludicrous idea. Board ...and we're going to go check it out. <coughs> Our crazy plan. So, uh, that's acknowledged and confirmed. Uh, proceed with caution. Sure. As you do. Mm -hmm. That'll fall on deaf ears. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so once the ship's secure, my character, I guess, you know, pop the canopy in. Okay. So the spacewalk is going to be a, uh, um, we would say that this is a demanding challenge. So that's a difficulty three. Can I get, uh, what, what is a spacewalk? Is it might or? Um. I will let you use either might or speed because speed includes reflexes and things like that, um, and might because you could you know propel yourself, you know, straight with some accuracy and some strength. Can I use uh, jumping to uh, augment? Yeah. Okay. Jumping, I will. I will let that go. All right. So um, if you've got climbing, I'll let climbing apply because you'll be, I also because you'll be grabbing on and and moving yourself through the. Uh, once you get to the other side. So do I get both? Yeah, I'll give you both because it's 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 close enough you can make it in a single. So all I have to effect. do is not roll a one or a two. And so you're gonna basically make that leap and a grab to get on. So if you've got either well, one of those. Said that. I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna give up my XP and re roll that. Okay. This is a bad time to get lost so, in space. So this is a different show. So you can spend an experience point to re-roll any die roll, or to have anybody else re-roll one. So you can spend an experience point for somebody else at the table, too. 
over the radio. That handle there, that's not really a handle. Came off. Don't aim for that. <laughs> Grabbed onto a handhold. Yeah, so so my character hand. my character kind of like you know takes sort of like a little bit of a running leap off of the front end of the of her ship, and she's obviously like headed towards something that looks like um like the hand a shadow of a handle on the side of the on the side of the vessel. I mean, not like a real handle, but like something that she could grab onto. And it turns out it's actually like scorch marking that just looks like a handle, and she nearly falls into space, deep space, and, and catches herself. So, you, actually, it's probably more like you uh, you, you grab something, and you thought it was going to be su- substantial, uh-huh. and it, like, pops off in your hand, maybe. Right. And then, you, in your franticness, you, like, wedge it, you, know, like, you start stabbing it, <laughs> trying to get purchase with it, and you grab it into one of the other, like, Creeks, uh, a cre- like a crev- crevice like- in it, okay. and you can use that to hold yourself, so you're a little off course. But she kind of like it gives you kind of like that that cool. Yeah. You know, Don't come this way. <laughs> so uh, with the with the Jedi, I like to go next. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and burn an effort. Uh, in in your case, Randy. Um, I'm gonna use speed. Okay. I was gonna say if you want, in your case, um, you could use intellect. Because you have those Jedi abilities, that general Jedi ability. Yeah, you can head ma- hedge magic yourself, sort of. Um, I would let you do that. Or you also have that far step ability. Yeah. You don't even have which, to. You, which basically lets you move there kind of automatically. That's like that Jedi jump thing. Right. Okay, force so, leap. Yep. Yeah, force leap. And it's going to cost uh, you less. And it'll probably yeah, cost you less. It'll, cheaper, so. it'll put you right I'm, there. I've got a, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave my speed alone. And two from intellect to four sleep. Actually, it only mind. costs you one total because you have an edge in intellect. So as long oh, as okay. you're not, and you don't have to use, you don't actually have to use any effort then. You're just activating that, that uh, ability. Oh, okay. So, so free... whenever you activate it like that, as long as you're not using your edge for something else, you can actually use it to lower your ability. And that's kind of what I was saying. If you have anything that hedge magic is just one intellect to activate, so as long as you are oh, only he's using far step, right, right. But I'm just saying. Actually, so in his case, I think I called it yeah, four sleep. Four sleep. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, it's called far step in my other games. <laughs> I reskinned a few things. Makes sense. Oh, so, so the like, Jedi just shows up. I see how it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, Camor Viz, also known as Mary Sue, I guess. <laughs> makes this force of leap. Uh, and I rolled a 19, so I'm going to assume that's good enough to get me where I'm going. This die may have been weighted to roll 19s. I may have melted it in the oven. I don't... <laughs> so I'm just gonna say I was using this very same set of die in the Ewok game, and I did not roll any ones during that game at all. But I rolled an an, an enormous number of fifteens. So I was really hopeful that that would continue. That it would continue, but apparently it's caught up with me. I'm yeah. sticking with this one if it's gonna be lucky nineteen. Right I now. would. Yeah. So the three of you make it to the uh, the ship without without too much drum- without too much drama. <laughs> uh, the uh, the hole here leads into what appears to be an old uh, uh, mess hall, which has the the doors have sealed like an airlock. Okay. Hey, Andrew, as part of my uh, standard equipment, mm-hmm. there's sort of like onboard camera, I could, or like camera glow rod I could throw on my shoulder or something and transmit back to my, my docking ring slash astromech. Absolutely. That seems totally appropriate. It actually sounds like something we might all have in yeah. very much an alien sort of way. Be sure. totally worth doing. <laughs> so that they can watch our folly <laughs> later when we're well, gone. You know, we got it for the intel guys. They like they so they take your body cams and then they grade you on it. Just in case we have to blow all of this up later, like there's some record of what we saw. You have script right. immunity. What are you talking about? He doesn't have script immunity. <laughs> you just saw him in 
the future. Maybe. I'm just assuming we may have to blow everything up at some point. That's all. <laughs> just because he lives doesn't mean things don't go badly. I didn't say that they <laughs> didn't. I just said. All right. So the doors are sealed. Is there any evidence of, like, at the... I mean, I just played cannibalistic Ewoks, but, I mean, at the sense, at the risk of being macabre, is there any, like, evidence of, like, remains of people or food, or is the yeah. place scoured? Uh, it's pretty scoured. It's been vacuumed out. Okay. Vacuumed out. Hey, Andrew, space. what would the normal crew complement be, or what was it when I looked at the... Uh, uh... The file for a ship, you know, this size. It's a capital ship, so it, it's a. But it's, it's just a, it's a not, cargo it's, vessel, too, right? Right. So it's it's enormous, but its crew is relatively small at only 150, um, uh, like positions. So it's usually okay. crew complement is about 300, so they can work in two ships. Right, right, right. Okay. Sizable. Mm -hmm. More than we could get out. Well, so. Uh, Master Viz, you said you detected life. About how much life are we talking here? Uh, I don't know. There was quite a few that were, I recognized that people were dying, but I think that may have been a, an echo of the past. Mm. So uh, there's at least one that I was able to contact with. Hold on a moment, and I reach out with the force to see if I'm able to to sense life on the other side of this airlock. Okay. Before I open the airlock and blow them out too. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this is going to be bad. Well, chances no are airlock. the corridors are probably hard sealed too. So, okay. they'll act like an airlock to move through. I just want to make sure there's nobody, off there's nobody on the other side of this door. So as long as, as long as you don't open to it, as long as, as long as there isn't somebody in the immediate corridor, you should be okay. okay. Yeah, and I mean, if a ship takes damage like this, they're definitely, it's going to automatically go into, like, general quarters, and all the passages are going to seal up to prevent, right. like, losing the whole crew from one breach, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Totally. So what do we, right. so what does Viz feel on the other side? I guess you should roll some so dice. Go ahead and give me an intellect test there. Uh, again, right. you'll be able to lower this by one step for your general Jedi training. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna burn any more points for this. I guess I'm gonna just okay. gonna. I got a 13 on the die roll. All right, so you just hear, but it's still not in the corridor right outside. Are the rest of us hearing this or no? No. He's just picking it up through general Jedi-ness. No, For creepy sure. Jedi is doing creepy things. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I still hear the cry for help, but there's nobody on the other side of this door, so I think it's safe for us to go ahead and open this airlock. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and step out of the way of ejecting uh, uh, stuff in the hallway when this, this potentially pressurized door opens. Sounds like but, a great uh, plan. <laughs> that is a good plan. As well. <laughs> so you guys step aside, breach the door, yeah. Yeah. and indeed, uh, some stuff does leave that area. But fortunately, it looks like the air pressure on this on the other side of the door was not that great. Um, okay. Probably because it's not a very big space, and you kind of look through. Um, so things kind of like tumble in, but they don't come like rocketing in. Interesting. Uh, so we'll proceed. Now, I'm, I'm detecting that if, if there is at least one person still alive here, which to me seems unlikely. This looks like it's been here a couple of years, right? Yes. Uh, we have an immediate logistics problem because I don't know how we would extract them. Right. So I guess I'm going to have to come back to base and let them know that uh, we may have survivors and to maybe prep a, uh, a rescue extraction shuttle. Um, yeah. That's not a bad call and they definitely respond well to that. They're like, yeah. Alright, we'll prep a uh, medical ship to head your direction. And Keith just saved the party from TPK. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Thinking ahead. There you go. So standard operating procedures for these sorts of things. 
So when we look in the hallway, are there doors at both sides? There are doors on both ends, yes. All right, right or left? Well, you come in. Are Let's you gonna up. Are you going to reseal the, the... Oh, yeah, we're going to reseal the door. That's okay. a ter- that's th- Leaving that open is a terrible plan. Okay. The ship does appear to have atmosphere, because as soon as you seal that door, this room refills with air, but it is very minimal. Okay. How about artificial gravity? Is that functioning? Um, it is currently functioning. Okay. All right. I look well, around. I mean, let's follow the Jedi's and, nose. It's a glorified uh, uh, bloodhound here. At the moment. <laughs> um, I circulate. You, and, right. I circulate in some of the external air just to maintain my reserves. Okay. Well, you know, I'm gonna be here a while. The last thing I want to do is run out of air. While she's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, uh, Try to scan the quality of the air to make sure it's breathable and there's no foreign pathogens. Or... Oh it is, yeah, it is not it is not contaminated, but it is it is at lowest survivable atmosphere, so it's like being in the mountains. For sure. Um, it is it's enough that you know you're not going to suffocate, but it is going to be taxing. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and draw on my uh, reserves a little bit longer than I think. <laughs> Yeah, Commander, I'm not sure that I think um, anybody could have lived here this long on this kind of uh, of an um, atmosphere at this point. And if, even if there was one person left, I am pretty certain that they would have run out of oxygen. Can I make a check on survival? Sure. To make sure that I actually know what I'm talking about. Now that I've made up that. Uh, an eight. You're Typical not entirely wrong. Uh... Certainly, too. You know, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of humans could probably survive that. Okay. Um, and not in great numbers, but one or two, given the diversity of life in the universe, um, there are probably a handful of species that that sit in the, uh, you know, the the, the the republics. Uh, population that would do okay. All right, I agree some might that. even almost thrive. Um, the ammonia breathers would probably do okay as long as they had their little thing that lasts like a long time. Right. So I relay that. Chances are, if we find survivors, they're not likely to be many, or they're not yeah. likely to be human. Like the Gand use their own; they have their own atmosphere stuff. They keep right. their stuff. So like the, the guy that. Talon like in the future. My war buddy that I will know in the future or yeah. near future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's just keep uh, exploring, I guess, right? Let's let's see if we could find uh, uh, this this life form that our Jedi is detecting. Yeah. What what what's the general like creepy vibe happening right now? We have like flickering lights. So... There are flickering lights. There's like hanging cables everywhere. Um, the you can hear the uh, the the life support system crank to life, and it just makes this like really loud, deep sort of <laughs> through the bowels of the ship. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, All right. And then you can hear you can also hear the deck plating creak as you move al- move around. And hey, Andrew, what I know we're in like a section <clears throat> of the ship that's kind of broken off into four different pieces or whatever mm-hmm. you said, right? What what part of the ship would you say we're in? Like the forward cockpit section? The engine You're in probably the, like the crew housing uh, compartments. So we like came in through the ship somewhere. Midship somewhere. Okay. Yeah, we came in through the mess hall, so. Oh. It's not near the engine room and it's not near the cockpit. Okay. Uh, there probably there might be some medical stuff in this area. Uh, definitely uh, crew quarters. Um, I mean, if we're talking about one or two survivors, they they probably would have set up shop in the mess hall or a medical facility if available, because those seem that's where the heaviest stuff is that you would have to move, and uh, uh, that's where the resources are, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's let's maybe search those first. Yeah, I look over my shoulder at Talon and I say, "Which way? Which way to the uh, to the medical facility?" Um, I mean, I, I I did study like the ship, right? Mm-hmm. So do do I kind of know which direction that yeah. is? 
Yeah. yeah. All right. So you know, it's all you know. I think it's up one of these ladder wells, two decks, and uh, uh, just a little bit forward in the in the crew compartment. If I have this thing sort of figured out right. All right. Well, my character is actually a scout. And, Either way. And <laughs> and trained in climbing, jumping, running, and survival. So. I so how would you survive? I volunteer as tribute to go first. <laughs> um, well, I wouldn't fall off anything. Strong, <laughs> strong effect. I wouldn't run into any blasters, blaster fire, or any like lightsabers. I mean, I think you know all these things. So, um, given the information that Talon uh, has on the ship, uh, my character will head up the first set of uh, ladders and or is it turbo lifts i don't know what they're working we won't our so turbo much. lifts won't be working we'll have to go through the jet the um the tunnel system the corridors or the uh okay. not the port i mean that's it's what they had to emergency do emergency situations huh? so, yeah yeah i mean I, what are they called the i forget what they're called in star the, trek the jeffrey's tubes. yeah the jeffrey's tubes but i know that's not what they're called in the star wars because Jeffrey's tubes is. They don't have them in Star Wars typically. It's what? Like something they've explored. I what? Don't you don't have Jeffrey's tubes in your starships <laughs> in Star Wars? Oh, they're the there. They're there. We, we see extensively on the inside are. Uh, uh, they don't have those kinds of problems. Or it's the Falcon and it's kind of all one level anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right. Although they had the ladder wells for the gun turrets, right? Right. The ranch design of the Falcon, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, head up the. Uh, the Jeffrey's tubes will just steal that right out of Star Trek. That's fine. And um, and head in the general direction of what makes sense to the uh, crew quarters. All right. So following uh, Commander's lead, you lead them out towards the uh, or the infirmary, isn't the infirmary. that? Or the infirmary. I'm sorry, the infirmary. Right. So you, you start yeah. leading them up towards the infirmary, and as you go up the uh, the ladder. Um, the lights get very dark between ships. You know, between decks. Between the decks, okay. Um, there, there's very little in the way of emergency lighting, and what is here has gone dark. Okay. Um, well, we have our little lamps, right? We're doing we do. okay. So in the, the flickering, the flickering, you know, flashing beams that you have on your on your shoulders and helmets, uh, that light is kind of faint and dark here. And doesn't do a whole lot to eliminate things. Um, kind of makes it very creepy and, and and whatnot as you as you kind of find your way up to the next level. Okay. Um, up on that next deck. I'm scared. Uh, <laughs> you pop open the doors that on the next deck, um, and that sensation of life, Randy, gets a little stronger. And uh, I whisper to my calm, uh, it's up ahead, whatever it is that's left alive on this wreck. My character, um, can our, our um, helmets, can they be like retracted rather than taken off? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she'll, I leave my calm in my ear, but for the purposes of being able to hear better, she does take off her helmet. Okay. Um, I know that Actually, that means... it's probably more like a face mask that you would pull back. Oh, uh, so I so my so my ears would not be, um, what I don't, because what I don't I want to be able to I mean like wearing headsets right now, I mean it it de dampens all of the sounds and she okay. needs to be you able to hear. You want to be able to hear. Yeah, so I just want to be able to hear. So whatever way that that makes the most sense to do, um, but she wants to be able to hear because if there's someone who's calling for help quietly, we might not be able to hear them easily. Okay. So you try to get better outside. Right. Local. Right. So when we get to that deck, um, I want to make a perception check. Okay. And I'm going to spend a uh, level of intellect. I rolled an 11. Okay. Uh, you don't pick up anything yet. Um, you guys all step up into the corridor. And the floor here kind of bows down a little bit like it sustained you know structural damage mm -hmm. and it has a bit of a shift down 
and then it kind of goes back up. So it's kind of got this like this bow in it, this this bend. Um, and then heads off in the direction of where the uh, medical bay should be. You can also see what appears to be a smear of dried blood along the wall. Okay. It kind of runs along the wall. And it's like, did Julian Assange seek asylum in this ship? <laughs> are we sure that's, are we sure that's blood? Yeah, it's, it looks like blood. I don't know. Does it, does it, does it flake off like dried blood? <laughs> sure. All right. Well, I mean, I got survival. I'm going to milk that for all it's worth. <laughs> uh, I mean, but it's impossible yeah, to I mean, tell how no late power it's up been. here. I think it's becoming increasingly unlikely that this is where they'd be hiding. But but let's uh, it, it's still let's there's, scout there's, it out. Back up here, there the lights are kind of back on in the corridor. But again, it's back to that flickering, and you can actually oh, okay. hear you can hear the hum of the lights. Okay, it's got a. Um, and the ship is still making its other groaning noises. Um, does anything does does it have sort of like a cyclical pattern to of any kind? Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. As long as that doesn't change, okay. I accept that as the as the status quo. All right. We'll be careful walking across this wreck here, and um, I guess we have to head down head down the little bow and back up mm -hmm. okay um i go i'll go first on my own is there like anything we can use for like hand holds along the wall um there are uh there's like a a, a, a mid corridor rail um that was probably more decorative than anything else okay but it's there it runs it runs at about face height okay i just want to kind of make sure that i have a hand on that as i test out the the decking mm -hmm. and where the decking drops it does get a little bit higher because the decking drops down in the far stage where it's supposed right to. uh so when when you get to that point you're actually holding it almost at the head height okay because of the way the deck the deck seats uh slants does it seem to give or anything the handhold? No. No, I meant the deck. Yes, the deck is very soft. Okay. As you get that far down, it gets, you can feel it moving underneath your feet, and it moves a lot. Okay. All right, guys, be careful. Whoever's heaviest goes last. <laughs> Although you could like far step if you want. Well, I mean, I don't know that you want a far step, but. Shouldn't have eaten so much uh, pudding paste before. <laughs> the mission oh man well your your flight i wasn't going to say anything but your flight suit does look a little snug today oh no <laughs> the rebellion's ass <laughs> <laughs> well so, you know or the republics i guess the republics <laughs> uh so she went first do we have to make checks do we have to roll nope. to go it is it is something you can just do it's just Really? Oh, I think I'll go next because then if it does crumble, the Jedi could leap across, right? Yeah, that's true. So, so. it just kind of gives way underneath your feet a little bit, but it doesn't break. You can just feel it. It's got this kind of softness to it that shouldn't be there, but it, it holds your weight the entire way across for about, for all three of you. Right on. All right. So right now, our marching order, so to speak, is uh, uh, Ansu, then Talon, and then me, Viz. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, at this point, you are, uh, you, you go a little bit further, take a couple of a couple of turns here and there on your way to the, uh, the medical bay, and you arrive, uh, the medical bay doors are sealed, and they are locked down. Okay. Mm. Uh, is there like a, a control panel there? Can we see like... Mm -hmm. There's control panel. Do we know there's atmosphere on the other side of the door? Um, by your sensors that, you, that you're kind of using, it looks like there's definitely atmosphere on the other side of the door. Okay. 
and uh, looking at the, the information that appears on the readout of the door panel, it looks like it's got a more full atmosphere than you guys have out here. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's not. Let's do that. The, um, the medical bay also has a, uh, because it's a medical bay, it has a uh, airlock of its own, which in most cases is probably more for like outbreak reasons and things like that. If there was something illness oriented, you would want to lock that down. So when we oh, enter, sure. we'll actually be stuck in a small cubicle. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it'll be like entering a bank. Yeah. When they've got that, that little area. It's crowded. Maybe we shouldn't two. all three of us get trapped in there at once, though. <laughs> so it'll be like a best of deal. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I mean, I can go in. Anything happens? Uh, why don't we before before we go in? Can I? Uh, There's also. There like a... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yo, go ahead. What, what are you gonna ask? Is there a? Uh... I don't know, some kind of like a computer, like small computer terminal on the, by the side of the door in the control panel where we could like try to tap into the computer's uh, memory bank or history to see what happened here before we actually open this door in case there's something bad on the other side of the door. Tragic backstory online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Randy? I'm going to go ahead and give you a discovery experience point. So go ahead and mark that down. Actually, everybody can get one of those. I'll go ahead and do that to the whole group. Um, Yay. There is a port underneath the, uh, uh, the, the door controls, but it is an astromech port. Uh, we don't have one. Do we have any anything? So in if, our you, if you had tools? if you had somebody who knew how to do you know slicing, and was really good at that and had the right equipment, which at the moment none of you have the right equipment for, um, you might be able to slice and get the information you needed. Or it's a you good could... thing we brought a universal key though, right, Jedi? <laughs> oh yeah, we can open it the hard way if we have to, but. The, the backstory we, stuff we, is not currently available, but you, you you can see where it might be available. Um, okay. And there are probably better terminals to get that information from. All right. I, I disconnect my yeah. lightsaber from my belt, and I look I at don't know, the two of you. Oh, I don't know. Can you, open it? Can you open it the easy way, or shall I try the hard way? We can try to, we can try to um, lockpick it, basically. We could okay. still try knocking, right? Yeah, yeah, we, try that. yeah. You you've got codes, and you could try knocking. Knocking is probably you know the least invasive. Like well, let's try that first in here. First? Let's. We I tell first? you, I'll tell you what. Let's knock first because if it's something that's going to attack us, it's going to attack the door first, or the other side. We should be able to hear it. I'll put you guys in charge of knocking. All right, right I here. knock, really loud, and dun, then I put. Dun, dun. And then I put my head to the door to see if the vestibule on the other side activates. Nothing happens. Oh, that's not good. Okay. Knock again. I'm not knocking again. <laughs> Everybody give me a perception. The postman only knocks once. But he comes twice. So this would be it. I got a 14. Oh. I got I an automatic want... intrusion. Uh... <laughs> I'm not spending my XP for that. Okay. I rolled a 14, but I'm skilled in uh, identifying or assessing danger. Okay. Yeah, we're live, by the way. So, um... I'm going to use that intrusion. You can use that later. I may hang on to that one. Yeah, we so, have to release the, release the hounds. So the, uh, as you, as you knock on the door, you all sense and kind of like look back as something dark and shadowy moves along the, uh, 
uh, far portion of the uh, corridor around the bend. Away from the medical bay. Away from away from the medical bay. So while I've got right. my ear to the door, I can like see it out of the corner of my eye. You don't see it. I don't see it. That's why I can't see anything. <laughs> I don't see it at... either. I think because I rolled a one. Oh, oh you got a one too. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, so Adar, you noticed. I rolled a fourteen. I noticed. Yeah, you wrote. You noticed something move. I thought Randy said something else. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's an automatic intrusion, Randy. We're in trouble. Uh oh. And I'm gonna hang on to it for a moment. So I, I just see something. I assume it's probably Minox, like, and that's why the power's half out. There's probably, I mean, it's an asteroid field, so there's probably Minox everywhere anyway. Right. And they find some power and they start chewing on it. So. Right. Yeah, some movement, but not unexpected, right? Right. Okay. Uh, you know, I won't even. I'll mention like, hey, I think there's some Minox on board. But I'm not alarmed by that, I don't think. Okay. Or I could jump and scream. Like a real high <laughs> that sounds like a very bad plan. Let's not do that, okay? <laughs> especially since the especially since the floor is not very stable. So while he's talking about Minox, um, the two of you, um, Randy, you notice it first, and then. Uh, because you you got your ear to it, you don't you don't see it right away. Mm -hmm. um, but along the, uh, the 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 corridor along the wall, you guys can see um, just the small tracery of frost expand out just a little bit near the door. This sounds terrible. Um, I'm starting to think this might be breached on the other side. It doesn't make sense, though. Randy. Um, the other thing. Frost is expanding, but they didn't, she didn't hear, like, the airlock on the other side open or anything? No, it's just, like, this small little, just a small patch of, of, of frost kind of forms on the wall. And Randy, um, while she's noticing the frost and you're kind of picking up on the frost that, that's formed a little bit, uh, you get this overwhelming sense of the dark side moving towards you. Alright, I ignite my lightsaber with a snap hiss. I put my helmet back on because this could be bad. I'm going to continue expounding on the, the prevalence of Minox in our <laughs> Okay. Um, this isn't a Minox. This is something else. This is no cave. <laughs> At which point the lights Snowy. flicker again, and they kind of drop even further, and then they go out. Oh, this is oh no. Bad. And out of the Who's... darkness where the Minox should have been, Keith, mm -hmm. you see two bright red pinpoints of light placed like eyes in the darkness. There's red-eyed aliens. Hello, friend. We're here to rescue you. <laughs> And then there's a snap hiss of its own, and oh, a red lightsaber bad. illuminates. What what color is it? Red. You know, the universe of colorful color? evil. <laughs> well, that's not good. And you hear All right, so... heavy metallic footsteps coming to you out of the darkness. Uh oh. Do you want me to try to open this door? Yes. Quickly. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spin this. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, try lock picking. Actually, I hate to use my blaster. Nine. Nine. Did you Nine. just shoot the door? Well, I hate to do that because it'll be sealed and then we won't be able to close it again. Oh, no, I asked if you did. I didn't no, ask no. Just... So, what are you shooting at? I'm not shooting, I'm trying to. To open oh, the door just with just the it. yeah. <clears throat> you're over nine. Uh huh. You kind of like fiddle with the lock a little bit, and um, the airlock slowly seems to be coming online. Okay. And it 
It's not like jump starting a fighter. And it <laughs> starts to grind open ever so slowly. Hopefully. <clears throat> All right, I move, I and we're going to move into initiative at this point. Two. So if everybody would give me an initiative roll, this is a speed, a speed test. Oh, you no. can spend effort on it like you would normally. I will. 14. I rolled a three. Okay. Womp womp. I'm going to spend two uh, two bits of effort. So that's going to take it down by five. Okay. Don't bother rolling. Don't bother Don't rolling? Don't bother rolling. Okay. I got 14. Okay. So, Randy, you and Monica are up first. And then it is the figure coming out of the darkness. And then it is Keith. I try to position myself in front well, basically, between this figure in the darkness and my friends. Okay. It's a very Jedi-like thing of you to do. I work on the door. I like. I actually like physically get then into the door and start trying to push. Okay. Now that it's activated, it, it'll, it'll be. All right. So you start trying to push on the door. So basically, so, a might roll. So go ahead and give me a might roll, okay. Randy. You kind of step up between, and I'm going to have you. I'm assuming you kind of kind of wait your action then until until something happens to to react to. Right. Sixteen. Okay. Um. So, uh, Randy steps up. You've got your lightsaber already lit and out. Um. The figure in the darkness kind of like glides towards you. You can see its eyes. You can see this vague outline of a form, but it is only illuminated by the lightsaber, the red lightsaber. And it still only gives the most vague sense, almost like it was made out of smoke. Okay. That's bad. What the heck is that? So I, would I know what the species might be? If you can't see enough of it to tell. Okay. Um, it looks like it's shadow and smoke. Oh, all right. Is this corridor uh, on an exterior wall or like a wreckage no. exterior no. wall? No, it is an interior section. Okay. You've moved yourself into the actual guts of the ship. Fair. So now that the door is opened, so what can I see inside? It's the alcove. The waiting there's alcove. like no, there's no window on yeah, there. Yes, there's glass in there. So okay. Get to that in okay. Second. You're pushing it open. Right. Keith, what are you up to? Um, oh, I go after the thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, if the airlock's open enough to move through, I am moving through it also. And okay. probably drawing my blaster just in case. I don't know what good it will be against a cloud, but, uh, you know, it might come in handy. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be taking any other actions at the moment. Um... Brings us back to the top of the round. Monica, you want to give me uh, another mic roll? Yep. You can't actually get into the alcove. I'm in the way. I'm trying to open the uh, door. Uh, seven. Okay. That's enough to finally get enough for you to slide in. Okay. You creak it open a little bit, and you can kind of, like, fall into the alcove. Okay. Um, Randy is still advancing and you know moving towards you thus far it hasn't done anything else Are i will you... try to buy my friend some time and use a uh, force push to try to push this thing further back down the hallway away from us okay so you're gonna try to push on it go ahead yeah. and um that costs intellect so go ahead and give me an intellect roll okay so spend the points for for that, if you want to apply any effort to your push, you can do that. All right, I will apply one effort. So that's only going to cost me one intellect point. Is that right? Um, no, the effort is going to cost you three. What's the power cost? Uh, two intellect points. All right, so that's going to cost you a grand total of five, less your one for your effort. So it's going to cost you okay. four points to apply a level of effort. All right. I do that, and then I roll. Yes? Yes. Ooh, good roll, at least. 17 on the die. Okay. Nice. So, 
you do, you kind of like reach out with the force and you push back and you can see that the, the, the smoke kind of tears to pieces and even the lightsaber seems to like tremble in this and like flows back like smoke as you push it back down the corridor and you can actually feel the the air grow a hair bit warmer as it goes backwards away from you okay mm. but it never actually does like that like tumble that usually happens with that or like that it just kind of like movement. yeah it just kind of like slides back across the wall and you can feel like this almost like oiliness in the force around you all right um and with that i shout is... out tap tap on get it and and answer quick get inside and oh yeah we're, we're running away we're so as it away. as it's as it's been like pushed back away from you um randy give me a might defense roll okay <laughs> it is doing something that sounds terrible so I'm gonna roll might. Uh, I'm gonna spend two efforts to resist this. Okay. So, so that'll that's, be, what... that's five. Five out of your that, that costs you five from your might pool. Now I'm just gonna remind you, you may not recall that your pools are also your hit points. So oh, if you they go are. so if you go to zero, you're, you are you're... severely wounded. <laughs> yes. Oh but... okay, so all right, so I don't do that then. <laughs> well, I'm well, not can. sure how many. You, I mean, you, you can. can. I just don't know I've how many. You but spend. you don't know. You don't know what the effect is either. You know, something is coming, and it's actually going. To, it's affecting your physical form. Um, All right. So, how about a, I? I do one effort then. Okay. Because sometimes the effort is still better than the effect. Okay. So. That subtracts one from my might, correct? No. Uh, yeah. What's your what's your might? What's your might? My might edge is twelve. But you don't have an edge in it. So that's going to lower it by three. No. So it'd be nine. It goes to nine. Yeah, you'll go down to nine. All right. Here we go. Ooh, good roll, nineteen. Yay! Ooh. So with that, um, red lightning arcs out of the cloud and fills the area around you and you can like it, it like crackles off your lightsaber and you just kind of catch it there and you don't take any extra effect from it but you can you kind of like deflect it away from you and uh you know hold okay. your ground without without any further further problem that's why we keep you around exactly because <laughs> he's the lightning magnet we're gonna have to start calling him Lightning Rod. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Keith, um, I will uh, uh, continue going into the. Uh, so you duck airlock. into the into the into the, the newly opened airlock. Yeah, I sort of like tap uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the Master Jedi on the uh, shoulder there on my way, and so he knows he can uh, retreat after me. Okay. Are you working on the second door, or are you? Well, I don't to... know what it looks like yet. You wouldn't tell me. Okay. So you come in, and now you've got a glass door in front of you. Mm -hmm. It is also airlock quality, but it's got uh, transparent steel okay. on the front panel, um, so you can see into the medical bay. But it's so like covered in frost and and moisture that it's hard to see. It looks like you can see various medical bay pods. You can see a couple of back tanks, but beyond that, you really can't see much of anything. Just general forms. Okay, so I take a there's second. There's some lights and other things uh, on, like indicator lights on things, and there's dim lighting in the room. All right, um, I draw my heavy blaster, and I turn to uh, to. Um, and say commander i'm not sure why it's iced up like this it doesn't make any sense if it were sealed there isn't anything in the ship in the ship uh that would make sense for it to be frozen up like this i am suspicious. i mean if the survivors are a pantoran they might just like it cold but uh, uh 
and we can try yeah. to open the door. Whatever it is is coming up behind us, right. and this is a bigger I, room I to defend uh, ourselves in. It's can better I, than the lightning cloud. Whatever. Okay, it is. I, I can. Would firing at the door open the seal? Yeah. All right, I fire my head. Possibly. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> is there a control panel in here? Yeah. All right, let's try that instead. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spend intellect. Uh, I should have taken ships. Should have taken ship we, computers as my flex. Uh, I mean, the airlock. 15. You probably have to close the door that we have opened before we could open the other door, right? If it's an airlock, isn't that how it works? It's actually a medical vestibule, so you can okay. actually bypass that. It's not the same as an actual airlock. It is just currently acting as one. But since okay. you've got a full atmosphere and a light atmosphere, you're not going to completely depressurize. So the 15 and the 16 on your die looks strikingly a lot alike. I just realized I have to flip it over to figure out which one it is. This was a 15. Not that it makes a difference, because it's okay. still difficult five. Level five. So 15 and I reduced it by one. So you can get the door open. Alright. <clears throat> There's definitely a hiss of air and a strong breeze um, as it opens. And the, the air seeks to reach a equilibrium yeah i know i hate to give up that that though but all right blast of cold air i imagine yes yeah. and it is a blast of cold air all right is there anything in the immediate area that prevents us from entering now that we can nope. see in? you can see in and you can see two back to tanks facing you and in those back to tanks you can see two figures floating interesting well, we'll enter and to get out of the uh, Master Viz's way so that when he comes through. Uh, someone's got a truck coming through the, their neighborhood. I can hear it. There's a low hum. Sorry. That's not Sorry. your fault. It was just funny. I was like, <laughs> what am I hearing? And I realized someone had a truck you're driving hearing, by. You're hearing the, the servos on the door. I was going to say, I, I think I hear the engines try, or the uh, life support try to so crank up again. All right. And then Monica, give me a perception check while we're in the sand with this. Yeah, only a five. So you kind of like force the doors open, and you can you'll be able to enter in the next on the next round, or you can let um, Keith go in on Keith's action. Um, um, I'm not going in. I want to make sure we close this outer door. Okay. Uh, Randy. As soon as the Jedi's in. All right. Well, if he's going to wait, I look over my shoulder at Talon hesitantly and then duck, run inside. Okay. And then kind of step to the side so that I can defend against anybody that, against when Talon comes in, but hopefully behind me. I thought he, he already was already in. in. He's already You're in. The last yeah, I'm, I'm in the vestibule. I'm just not in the... So he's inviting you into the vestibule, Randy. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I step inside. And that I try way to, I can close the door. Okay. Yeah, I try to stand so that I'm, I'm out of the way of the door closing, but I'm like... So basically you hit the door close Lightning button. Lightning Boy and Talon. Okay. Do that for sure. Yes. Is it is it my turn now? It is the cloud go? The cloud, the cloud is going, but it, you can't see what it's doing from where you are. That's fair. Okay, well, on my turn, I'm just going to attempt to shut the door. Like, okay. both with buttons, manually, whatever my options are. Right, so you, like, hit the button, the door starts to close, and then you, like, lean into it and start shoving on the, uh, the, right. the thing to get it to close. Yes. Do you need a check from me or not really? No, no, that's just simple. We'll, we'll just kind of like narrate through that. So you start pushing on the door to get it to close. Um, Monica? Um, I feel like maybe at this point it was worth the, uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to step in. Okay. But I'd like to use one of my ciphers. Okay. It's a uh, knowledge enhancement. And for the next 24 hours, I have trained and uh, ranged attacks. I feel like 24 hours might be the length of my life that I have left to live, so um, I'm going to go ahead and use that cipher now that I now that okay. I have Just that option. Off. Yeah. And mark that you are trained currently. Um, so as you do that, a uh, uh, 
you did, a figure you did not see uh, almost materializes like right on top of you and it kind of like raises these arms towards you all right my and character you, actually you, yelps okay and you can <laughs> see like uh tubes like like blaster nozzles or something on them as they come up towards you yeah i i i i do kind of i they it surprises me okay so you yelp and i i i do kind of i i to let my part to, to let my team know that you know I mean, it's sneaking up on people. That's not okay. cool. <laughs> so what are you doing? Uh, I kind of jump back away from it okay. out of reflex more than anything else and bring my blaster up, which I pulled earlier. Right. So you're going to shoot it, it? Kill it. Well, I, I don't know that I'm going to shoot it. I need to see what I, I need to see what it looks like first. I, I mean, I'm in, right. uh, I'm in the medical bay. It could be the person we're here to save. That would be okay. terrible if I shot them. <laughs> Hey, we're here to rescue it you! Look like, Blam! It doesn't look like a human being, but you never know. Does it Could look like a medical, a medical robot? Hmm? Does it look like a medical robot? Now that you're five that you rolled before, you're not certain. Okay, well... <laughs> when you when you get a moment to pause and breathe, I'll tell you what it looks like okay, next good. round. Okay, great. <laughs> so I hear the scream and push the door hard. Right, close so harder. she screams, I you push the door kudu. harder. Because um, it's, it's the strongest language the door, we have available. The door closes, and you see this, like, flare of red light right outside the door, and then it goes dark outside in the corridor. This is terrible. Well, that thing's horrible. But we have we have a few seconds. Like, so we're, are we out of, like... You're out of combat phase. And, so it definitely lets get inside. Let's close this other door behind us, too. I have to go upstairs and get our pizza. I'll be back. Okay. Um, and uh, um, I guess we'll take a moment and examine. Uh, uh, since I have not yelped yet, I'm coming. Uh, uh, I heard him. Is I'm it is it a medical him. droid that is? So yeah, him yeah. Out? She she kind of calms down a little bit and can see that too. But what since she's it? walked off, it is a medical droid. Fair enough. Uh, so uh, we have we have two. They're alive in back to tanks. Yes. And the droid's active. Yes. So let's let's uh, question the droid, huh? Like Randy, I'm gonna put you in charge of like figuring out what the cloud thing is. Okay. And I'm gonna interrogate. All right. Can interrogate we take a, the. Uh, can we take a five minute break? Cause yes. I need, a, I, need a, I need a short break. Sure. It's a good time right. to do it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll be right back. So I will pull up my uh, yeah, well, can't get the chat. I can't see the screen very well from where I'm sitting. Uh, nobody had much to say. Okay. Chat was quiet. <laughs> so Keith, that's me. Did you catch the uh, the slight uh, thematic hint in Easter eggs for the title of this adventure? Uh, I mean, the Blue Harvest. Yes. Course. There's actually, uh, when I went to Celebration London, and uh, in fact, this Celebration Chicago is all, there, there's a, a, a band called uh, Blues Harvest. Yeah, uh, do, you, do you know where that all comes that, from? Well, it's the, the working title for uh, 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 Return of the Jedi. Yeah, it was the budget title. Did you catch it? There was a tagline that went with that working title? Yeah, it was like, fear is, I forget what it was. It's like Horror yeah. Beyond Imagination or something? There it is, yeah, Horror Beyond Imagination. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yay. It's always fun to be able to throw throw a little wrinkle on things. They did uh, um, an ex I think it's still the yeah it's expanded universe. They did a novel called uh, Red Harvest, which was a uh, sort of zombies book. Yeah, wasn't uh, it the one with the storm, sort of yeah the, the the stormtrooper zombies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never actually read that one, but I did see it in, in, in stores when I used to work in a bookstore. I have read them all, for better or worse. 
in some cases very better and others very worse. But I wish I had I wish I had sort of what? had time to read all the books. Oh, I'm sorry. They don't read no, anymore. So oh, okay. Just keep up with the new stuff. It's much more uh, achievable. Yeah, I should I should consider that because now the canon the the printed canon is much smaller. Right, it's it's accessible, I think, for newer people jumping in. Yeah, of course. To be so fair, the... like you don't need all of it either. No, you don't. But there's some really good stuff. Uh, the Leia Princess of Alderaan was really good. Lost Stars was really good. Anything by Claudia Gray has been fantastic so far. Just in general, I'll keep that in mind. I think she has like three. Um, I like because I like I was reading. Uh, when I when I read when I used to read what is now the Legends material, I read a lot of the stuff by Michael Stackpole. Sure. And that, um, that and that got me going into the uh, the New Jedi Order books. Okay. Those got mixed reviews from a lot of people, but I I enjoyed them. Uh, it was a nice change of pace. I mean, I read all the stuff that was as it was new, right. coming out. So I read all of it. Time. I read uh, all of it up until a point. I read all of it up until a point, but then I I just kind of lost lost my place on it they started coming out faster than i could read them yeah and it got stagnant for a minute because it was like oh look here's yet another imperial remnant and their super weapon for this book that they're going to try to dust off and use against the new republic so it was getting kind of like repetitive and they it seemed like they kind of said everything they needed to say about the new republic so the new jedi order was a uh something that i felt was like inevitable and that they definitely had to mix something up and make a change provide a new kind of threat yeah um, you can argue of the effectiveness of some of the choices they made to do that but uh, uh that something drastic had to be done was uh hard to argue yeah it, it, something definitely needed to happen that was part of why i had not read a whole lot of them i found that the uh the x-wing books were so much fun because they followed people who were not running around with jedi powers Sure. And well, a lot of it, horn, horn, but right. Yeah. Well, and and that wasn't until later. Right. I mean, they hinted at it early on, but it wasn't confirmed until later. It was like the quintessential West End Games campaign in a lot of ways. It's like, yeah. My character slowly discovers he's force sensitive. But, right. Uh, uh, the the follow up books to those by uh, uh, Aaron Alston were some of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, he's just so funny. They were both. Uh, both of them were good. Uh, Aaron Alston sadly passed, but uh, uh, a couple of years back. I miss that. But I wrote I wrote a tribute character to him in the the Aces book for Fantasy Flight Games. Oh, so I made him like a former Clone Wars Ace or something like that. Uh, uh, what, uh, did you name it after Aaron Alston, or how did how did you do it in tribute? What was the tribute oh, character? I, uh, say it again. I said, how did, what was the name of the tribute character? It oh, was, it was like Aaron Tonstall or something like that. Uh, it was, you know, one of those Tuckerisms. Right. But yeah, he's definitely got a character somewhere in my section on the Aces book. Because uh, he literally like passed as we were writing that book. Uh, oh, man. And it's the Aces book, and he did Raid Squadron. Right. It was like, oh, I guess. And I met him a couple times at celebrations. He's like the nicest, most generous you know person you could ever meet uh and obviously hilariously funny he did uh he had the ewok pilot yeah like, quote unquote ewok pilot which was really wedge wearing like a teddy bear outfit uh <laughs> and over the comms there was a lot of yup yup commander and yeah and which was so much fun mm -hmm. so many great ewok jokes mm -hmm. just like wedge is wedge is like the cyclops of uh rogue and or raid squadron and he's just the butt of every joke because everyone else is like a maniac and he's really uh buttoned up and straight laced like yeah they, they were just very well done i love those books yeah. so now we've got everybody back mm -hmm. um so you you come into the medical bay mm -hmm. and indeed it is a medical bay droid I'm good because i need healing <laughs> and the droid says i am md231 do you need assistance yes M D. Mm -hmm. okay. Very easy to remember. Yes, um, yes, M D. Uh, we are in need of assistance. We uh, 
also need some information. I can see that your ship has been under attack of some sort. What has happened here? We have been... And he kind of like stutters for a moment and stops. The ship has been very badly damaged. Yeah. Uh, oh, we saw. Yeah. It was <laughs> attacked twice. By who? Uh, separatists first. And they took control of the ship and brought it here out of the way. Or somewhere. Mm-hmm. But recently we were attacked again. I, I don't know who. Where are the remaining survivors? He looks at the, uh, back the, the back of the tanks. The Separatist captain and first mate. Prisoners. Sorry, I just realized Sweet. I didn't have my mic on, which is fine because I'm no, chewing, but... I mean, okay. Well, He's sweet. I'm going to gonna call that uh, medical <laughs> evac ship in and let them know we're picking up two prisoners in back the tanks, uh, separatist officers. Mm-hmm. That's pretty great. Uh, and also that we were under attack by a weird lightning cloud thing. Maybe some weird separatist droid weapon or something. Uh, I think that was a, a dark side spirit. Yeah, I can't put that in the military report now. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> By forces unknown. <laughs> Possibly hostile one of the dark forces got killed. Oh, like a separatist uh, fallen Jedi or force adept of some kind? And that's like Probably a died and that's, that's ghost thing around. Yeah. The dark side ghost. For sure. Yeah, there may be some weird force stuff happening here too, so. But yeah, I'll definitely send a report and request the medical evac. Okay. Which which might want some sh- soldiers because there's uh, 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 there I mean there's prisoners that we're taking. You don't want just like medical personnel. Right. Does MD two three one have a uh, stim pack I can use for to, to heal my intelligence so I don't have to make a roll? Um, he does have some medication that he can give you. Okay. That will. Uh, Heal up. Uh, he can. He, he's got enough. He can heal everybody up. Their their down uh, points because nobody went into actual wounds. So right. if you've got uh, if you spent any effort, you can replenish that. Now. Oh sweet! Or, you know, yeah, from your pools. Right. If you spend anything out of your pools, uh, the droid will go about making sure that he has the right cocktail of. Uh, medications to get you feeling up to normal. I'll go ahead and ask why the uh, environmental settings have the temperature so low. It says that the environmental settings are not low. Why are they the temperature that they are? Why, why is, is it, it frozen in here? Because the temperature settings are fine. I mean, there's I But everybody ice sees ice, ice right? I already can see the little bit of frost, but the frost is actually now beginning to melt and go away. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, fair I think enough. the I think what happened there is the the dark side ghost, um, its presence causes a chill a chill effect, and perhaps it was angry at not being able to get inside the medical medical cubicle, and that's what the frost on the end the other side of that glass was. Oh. Uh, yeah, so do I hear back from them about this uh, medical evac? Yeah, the medical evac is, is still en route, and uh, they will uh, consider it for prisoners rather than uh, Republic, uh, Republic personnel. Okay. They already, um, had a, guess... they already had a small security team, so they're just making sure that security team is uh, briefed and briefed. 
Um, so I want to go ahead and look at a schematic of uh, uh, the, the vessel again and, like, where we are in the infirmary. Okay. Is there a more efficient place to contact our astromechs and move them for extracting these uh, back to tanks and uh, ourselves? Sure. Um, go ahead and give me a uh, computer's uh, roll, ships for ship's computers. Um, sure. And I'm definitely uh, trained in the operation of right. ship systems. That's a little different, I guess. That, that, that would apply to this, too. Should have okay. had you opening the doors. I rolled a... Seven or not, seven, right? Um, but uh, this is an intellect thing, right? Yes, so I'll definitely burn some effort. Uh, okay, and I have one edge as well. So that so, lowers uh, the that I'm lowers just... the cost of the effort that you put on it. You're right. So, uh, um, I'll just go ahead and drop it uh, twice is the most I could do. Okay. That would cost me what, uh, four, five, right. five less five. one, so four, four. Okay. So I spent four intellect to drop it twice, plus I rolled a seven. Is that, am I good? You are good. That's the good news. You pull up the schematic. Um, you can see where you are, where the, uh, there is actually, um, one of the, the pylons that held the, uh, cargo bays in place. Um, yeah. you can see where, uh, there is a small, access um, near that pylon that is actually an airlock access and that's the closest and, and it could be used to attach a uh, a a transport tube which okay. should be which should be standard that. which would be standard on the uh the shuttle right i'll definitely forward that is like that's going to be the rendezvous point for the shuttle mm -hmm. i'll forward that, that data and we'll, we'll, i guess our next chunk of the mission is going to be moving these uh, back to tanks. I don't want to wake these guys up. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, so. According to the, according to all the, uh, the the monitors, they were never injured when they went in. So they're just being right, that, like, held for... They just... Like, uh, they're, they're prisoners. No. Uh, they got in... They got in... They're in according stasis. To the, they, they basically put themselves in stasis in case the atmosphere right. failed. We don't want to undo that at all. <laughs> so, um, so our been. next, our next, uh, our next hurdle, I think, is going to figure out how to get these guys to this place, and uh, uh, how to avoid getting like lightning in the interim. So, uh, um, how far is this trip from uh, where we're at to that airlock, and what sort of uh, known obstacles might be in our way. Well, so, as you look at it, the biggest known obstacle is the transporting of the tanks themselves. Um, you don't have turbo lifts. Right. None of, the, none of the elevators are functioning. So even though you have uh, hover uh, hover units... Like a hover can, gurney or yeah, something? Yeah, like a hover gurney um, that could move the tank out, um, you can only go so far with that. MD two thirty. Unless, unless, unless you can get uh, the turbo lifts up and running, or M disable the gravity <laughs> of the ship, right? Right. MD two thirty one. Do we have a way to sedate these people? I have sedation. Can we have them sedated before we take them out of the tanks? To what end? Though? So that we can move them without, um, without having to take the back to tanks. Yes. We just we we're we're concerned that they will not they will not uh, I'm concerned about administering sedation to otherwise healthy individuals. There are risks of sedation. While that is true, they also could they come out not, with they could come out with a psychosis. To, they have not consented to this treatment. If they come out with uh with stasis psychosis though they are at risk to both themselves and us and at this point we don't have the ability to bring them out safely and ensure that they will that they will be able to be rescued via any other method but through these jeffrey tubes is this droid a about. republic droid a republic model droid or a it is it is a republic model droid, droid. okay does it have like a Republic model restraining bolt on it? It does indeed. <laughs> uh, 
okay, uh, maybe someone has a data pad that, or I, we can come to uh, our droids. Hmm. I don't know. I have we a data pad. We do what we want, right? We could just order yeah. it. You can, have... you can override it. I mean, I have a data pad. At the moment, it's just telling you. It's just telling you. It hasn't said it won't do it. It's just giving you all of the. You okay, Baymax. You, you give it a direct <laughs> order. It'll 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 comply. Before we do this, are you okay with this plan? Um, I'm not sure. Uh... It'll be easier to carry them individually than to take the whole back to tank out. Okay. I, I feel like it won't be if they wake up, though. Then it becomes a whole different problem. What about the force ghost outside the store? Also a problem. So, um, but but Andrew, you never answered me. What what sort of path or obstacles? So we definitely have to go so that, up a so that, decks. So that's the first one. You have to go uh, back up a couple decks to get to this this point. So the, no turbo lifts is an issue. Um, the other major obstacles are uh, the uh, there are a couple of uh, corridors that would be more direct shots that you're going to have to reroute around because they've breached. Okay. So they're not viable passages unless you go full oxygen. At which point you're right. also not certain that they're showing anything in the way of uh, gravity and what oh. kind of handholds and maneuvering you might have in that area become well, questionable. We also don't uh, necessarily have uh, breath masks and stuff for these guys to survive the thin atmosphere. We have you a whole medical facility. Okay. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not like trying you, to no, jump. And, I'm and not like Jen, trying to jump got... back to my nursing, back to my nursing gear. But if they don't have a couple of masks and oxygen tanks, they should have those. Plus, you okay. also have the droid. The droid could go with you. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we should definitely bring the droid with us. I would say. I'm just thinking that yes. it might be easier. It might be easier to put them in gurneys or like you know. Uh, well, and there sling. there are there are uh, there are collapsible gurneys here. Mm -hmm. um, they again, run on on slight. Uh, that, that don't run on any sort of technology. So I mean, they would just you know, right down. All right, so I so I'm I'm gonna just suggest that in an emergency situation, there would be something available to move these people from level to level without the the availability of of lifts there is um but it is not currently usable because this is beyond that kind of emergency too much of the ship has actually been breached okay um but you said the 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 back to tanks themselves have like little floaters so we could just sort of shove yes. them around right and that is that is one of the ways that you can get those around they actually are built okay. with and so the the corridors that they were intended to be used in their they their unfortunately breached areas and we couldn't get them right because uh, we can't actually take them back down that so, hallway we came up the, so you can get them out it. and move them around like you normally would like 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 he's talking but eventually you're going to get to a point where um, even with the hovering you can get them out so far and it might be good to maybe split the two plans you know get them as far as you can and then carry them the rest carry of the, them way. the way the rest of the way because then at least they're you know they're incapacitated until you get them out that far all right so we don't want to start moving <laughs> on until we know that there's a ship outside waiting for us anyway and we also need to figure out what the deal is with the lightning cloud and get some sort of plan for that can we bring up the schematics of the ship so, uh, now that we're in some kind of like in the, in the medical computer there yes um, so we've already you were already looking at, at part of the schematic, um, but you can also expand your view out beyond the ship somewhat and see okay, the can, area. Can we find like a, another way out from this this room, away from the you know? Force yeah, there are coast. multiple exits. You don't have to go back out through that whole, that corridor. You can't. Yeah, I really oh, okay. don't want to. No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that appears to be like the back entrance. Because the uh, one of the walls on the other side of this room has another one of these double 
uh, the, vestibule. the vestibule entrance areas, but that entire front wall is transparasteel. Oh, and so it opens up on a, on, a, on a wider, brighter corridor, um, and you don't see anything out that way. Ah. Well, that's a lot nicer. Well, let's... Right, so it's still flickering lights, but it's not it's not quite the condition yet. Well, then let's walk our then let's walk our tra uh, path of egress before we take everybody out of their tubes and tanks and figure out where we're going to run into our our yeah, point we of a, we need a clearer path for our, Keith. Uh, Keith, your sounds off. Rescue team. Sorry. <laughs> uh, if they wake up, let's lie to them and tell them the Separatists already lost and the war's been over for 50 years. We can do that, too. <laughs> I'm not above lying. <laughs> if it keeps them peaceful, right? Well, right. we can do that. I mean, I'm okay with that. We just have to convince uh, MD231 to not say anything, which we, we can do. We will blast him if need be. He now thinks that, too. Beep boop. <laughs> Um, okay, well... Well, that so... might actually be the best choice, then. We could wake them up now, tell them that, and then get them on board to help us get out. Right. I don't have any persuasion. I'll have it tomorrow, though. We can wait until tomorrow. <laughs> it's nap time? I like nap time. Yeah. Do I have any persuasion? Probably not. I can't you can imagine. all You can all try persuasion. I mean, right. persuasion is... Uh, it's they won't people. believe me anyway. Yeah, Nobody you can try does. it, but you'll be at a negative, so. Um, I'm, well, yeah, it doesn't really uh, play up to our party's uh, uh, talents, I guess. But uh, uh, I'm just saying it's an option. Uh, if it comes down to it, just go with it, I would say. <laughs> All right. But let's try moving them unconscious first. Well, let's let's clear the path first, make sure there's a oh, clear path of egress. Right. Yeah. Do you, are you so, gonna, when you say clear the path, you're gonna go walk it already? Yeah, we that's we'll need to do that. Okay. Yeah. And was there anything in the ship's computer about the second attack? Yeah, forces unknown, and um, they came aboard and took something. I mean, and it was the ship had actually, um, from what you can tell, if you read the logs and whatnot. Uh, the ship was stolen. The Separatists unloaded most of the cargo and stuff. Um, and it looks like they were planning to do some sort of, like, uh, trap arrangement here. And sure. so they had stripped it of almost everything of value. At least according to the records. Okay. Um, and they were going to set it up as a ghost ship and radio the... Uh, Republic and do pretty much the plan you were afraid was going to happen. But yeah, like a distress call trap. Mm -hmm. Sure. And they were running on a uh, skeleton crew of about 75. So they weren't even manning all the posts. Right. Okay. Um, and they had a uh, shuttlecraft in one of the in one of the now empty uh, cargo pods. And that was pretty much the only thing of interest here. Um, gonna I'm going to radio my droid and tell it to scan for uh, uh, droid control ship frequencies. Like, okay. you know how the, the Separatists use, like, the centralized right. brains to, like, mm -hmm. control all the drones and stuff. So I'm going to have them scan for that and see if there's anything active. And if so, maybe it could be pinpointed. Okay. Um... There's a... <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, and basically reports back that um, does not sense any uh, droid control frequencies, but there are uh, ships moving in the darkness. Hmm. Oh. Well, that's bad. That sounds uh, terrible. And he shows well, you—he shows you the scan that he's got now. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like some of the, the debris field um, when you scanned it before were probably uh, ships disguised to look like debris, 
Oops. Like droid ships. Oh, so they were like um, powered down. That were all powered down, and now they are powering up and moving, and they should be getting control signals. He tells you, know, he shows you that they should be getting control signals that he, right. he can pick up, but he can't quite. And you're looking at some of the profiles and things. Basically, they were they're they're like stealth droids. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm not going to have our ships just sitting there. Um. So I guess I'll order the droids to uh, uh, scatter into the asteroid field and, and hide okay. and, uh, uh, and, and wait for my signal to call and just keep scanning and uh, reporting us of any changes. I doubt the ships are going to blow up the wreckage. So, so um, your droid says okay, and uh, you can see... On your on the scanners that you're sitting there looking at on the, on the computer screen, that the little blips for your ships move off into the debris field away from it, and um, from here with what they gave you and what you've seen, uh, a couple of a couple of button pushes and you can now see the uh, the droid ships on the on the scanners here, but it's mostly because these are keyed to the separatist and so. Right. It's showing some of their their tech. Yeah. But it's just um, tech. They don't they're not actively. Well, so they're so you can see that their their ships there are they have some like their vulture ships moving around out there. Okay. Um do we uh is there a, a, a transmitter in this portion of the wreckage or no? Like a comm system? Do we have the comms array in this section or no? Um, there are comm arrays, but not the comm array. So maybe uh, there's a ahead. way to hijack. Everybody that. go ahead and give me a uh, computer's roll real quick. Okay. Because you can all be looking at it from different terminals and getting you know, similar information. I got I a did nine. Not, I got a four. <laughs> I got a seven on the die roll. So oh, no, we oh, didn't oh. do very well. Well, you were all working together to do this thing, so I'm gonna roll the difficulty accordingly. Um, so with all of you kind of like pushing buttons and looking at things, and you start you know, you're talking back and forth, comparing notes. Um, the radiation signature that you picked up early on, Keith, mm -hmm. might be a power supply that could power a a makeshift comm array. So what I'm thinking we could maybe do is uh, maybe I can use my uh, remembering cipher mm -hmm. and uh, remember something about uh, one of the older droid control signals circa whenever this trap was set. Since that was <laughs> earlier in the war and they've probably changed codes a dozen times since then. Right. Uh, maybe I can remember what the signal is and transmit it to those ships and sort of uh, take them over or get them to destroy each other or something to that effect. Um, so you want to like basically sick them on one another? I, I think so, yeah. That mm -hmm. seems like the, <laughs> the best option. Alright, so you burn that cipher and you have a code that you think will work. Mm -hmm. um, so we will call that uh, two assets. So that will lower the difficulty by two automatically. Okay. Um, you will still have to hack their system. Sure. And send out that signal. <clears throat> you have a comm array that can do that. Um, you've got your ship system, so I will give you your, your, your training in that. Right. Which um, is skilled. Which is, that's, so you're lowering the difficulty by four steps getting started. Um, do you want to put any effort on this? Sure. It's an intellect test. I'll mm -hmm. put uh, one. I have an edge for intellect, and I'll put one level of effort. So that's, that'll cost you two points that, out of your two? pool. Mm -hmm. So that okay. lowers the difficulty by five. Yes. Okay. And so this roll. went. So this went from being impossible to only being a target three. So you're looking for nine. Wow! Good job. <laughs> so what am I looking for? Nine. Nines. Or nine are nine are better on the die. I got a four. 
No, no, re-roll that. Spend an XP. Yeah, oh, I'll spend an experience to re-roll it. 18. Yes. All right, so Ooh. you get you get control of them. And you can set them either to uh, guard the area, destroy one another. Um... So I'll definitely put them on a, a, like a patrol, <coughs> I guess. Okay. A, a patrolling route, like circling the piece of wreckage we're on. Okay. Uh, and I'm also going to uh, update the uh, medevac shuttle or command and let them update the medevac shuttle okay. on uh, the current situation. Um, and as I recall, vulture droids can augment into a tank mode. Okay. Can't they turn into like walkers and like walk yes, around? Yes, they can. Yeah, they can. So why don't I have half of them set up as uh, tanks in the uh, uh, landing area uh, to sort of protect us and or the shuttle? Okay. From any, like right on know. the outside of the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, to to maybe protect our our evac route while we're uh, while we're leaving when we get to that point. Okay. If we're, if we're running like crazy from a lightning cloud, they could blow it up with missiles. That's all. <laughs> okay, sweet. Well, that's that's huge. I did a thing. Yeah. You did a nice that's thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's a lot more beneficial than you even realize yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so go ahead and give everybody an XP for that too, because that's a, that was a good use of, of stuff and discovering things here in this room between the uh, the debilitated uh, crew and whatnot. All right. And we're going to do a quick cut scene here and out in the darkness beyond where your characters can actually see. A dark ship moves against the uh, the curtain of night, and you can only really see this ship as it approaches by the asteroids it blots out from view. So it's ultra black. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I take it that's not our medevac shuttle. No. <laughs> no. Good thing we can't see it. We feel no fear. All Brave right. Sir Robin ran away. So, I mean, it's it's ten till four. So, how do we want to handle this? Because we're coming up on our we're, we're coming up on it. Okay, so, you guys, you can walk your route. Um, the strange force ghost does not bother you again at the moment. Okay, that's good. Uh, you walk back with the uh, to go get the the Back prisoners mm -hmm. right. are you gonna where are you waking them up is, well as late is, as possible right yeah is that okay. is it about how far are we going to have to take them out of the tanks um you could get them almost all the way there and then just drop down there drop head up the one level that you have to go up all right, but we'll have. But it's, you you can get basically to the lift where you would have to do that, and then they're going to either have to climb or be fireman carried. All right. Yeah, let's definitely get to the lifts then, and let's wait till the shuttle's in position before we <laughs> wake them up and move up, because then at least we'll have some uh, infantry Backup. support. Yeah. Right? yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever day that ends up being, I'm assuming it's not going to be the same day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a short scouting mission, right? It yeah. Can't be that oh, okay. We weren't that far out. No. All right. It was just one sector over or whatever, right? right. Okay. It could be like an hour behind us or two hours or something. Right. Okay. And you called them really early, so they they're they're almost here. All right. So yes. so we can move them out to that area and then once we know that they're docked, I mean well I guess this is probably a safer place to stay until we know where the until we, we could seal ourselves in the non-functioning turbo lift. That's fine. <laughs> well, that's I'm trying to figure. I mean, I'm like trying to figure out because you know invariably that we're going to be attacked when we're out there. Sure. So, sure, sure. Because that's how GMs roll. <laughs> um. So we yeah, want to just fast I mean, I'll forward get my to them arriving. Ready on the blaster. Worst case, I'll just <clears throat> we'll we'll sedate them by stunning them until they're unconscious. Okay. Right. 
All right. So yeah, I think we're just gonna sit down and wait. My my Jedi have any thoughts? <clears throat> um, I sense out with the force and, and uh, well, no, I wouldn't do that. I would alert him where we are. He knows where we are. He saw us come in this room. Yeah, you, you're, <laughs> your your location's not oh, a no, secret. We moved, though. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, we're gonna move. We're oh, gonna, yeah. Oh, okay. We moved into the we moved into the corridor. But you could you could still do your sense if you want to do something to sense out. You could do it before you move on, because you had to come All back right. anyways. You had to loop around. Right. Yeah, so I'll do that to see if uh, where our friend I feel my friend is at, so to speak. Um, you can actually feel his presence, its presence, whatever it is. Um, and it seems to have like tendrils that go throughout the entire ship um great it seems to to touch various various points all along and it is not one of those points is not very long from your point of evac great but most of it is is clumped up here most of the strongest parts and it almost seems to be like pacing around this room like it can't get in yeah, well, that's probably all right. So now I have a now I have a second thought. Do you share that with us? Yes, I do. Okay, so once the Jedi shares that with us, I am thinking that trying to manage to back the tanks down the hallway is probably not going to be feasible, and to protect all of us, we may I'm have using to... it like a shield. <laughs> <laughs> so if they don't survive, then. <clears throat> So sorry. If we only get one prisoner back instead of two, it's still one more prisoner than we had. That's still okay. a net win. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, then I yield to my commander's obviously greater wisdom than mine. <laughs> Body shields, man. Body shields. When you hey. say meat shield, you mean for real. <laughs> <laughs> I am pushing it. It is in front of me. I feel very safe. So, Randy? Very good piece of cover. Randy? <laughs> yes. It really feels like it cannot come in here, and you're not quite certain why. But it's almost like something is keeping it's it vapor proof. No vaping in the medical facility. <laughs> <laughs> it's a you know one of those HPA uh, filters on the. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Can't get through the filter. Do you mention that as well then? Yeah, it's like it's. Pa I tell you that it's pacing outside, and for whatever reason, it can't get into the cubicle. That might be worth taking a look build. around. I mean, if it I mean, can't go where we need to go, but you said it's. It seems like it's near our evac point, right? Yeah. Um, are we? Where are we at exactly? Are we like in the hallway, or are we still in the cubicle? No, I thought Where's we were still in the med, med bay. This would be right, before well, you I leave. I bring up the schematics on the on the computer terminal if we're still in the cubicle, mm -hmm. and I point to where I feel that it's going to be a problem later on. Right. Yeah, he can show you where it's going to be, and it's. He's like, I can feel it's kind of in this area, and 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 you can kind of put your 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 finger on the map, and it is probably you know two or three corridors from where you are. When he mentions that it, it feels like be, maybe it's going to be like evacuating from that there's something that like it can't get in here. I just would like to take a quick look around and see if there's anything that seems out of place. Seems like maybe there's a lot of like uh, you kind of like look around. Yeah, there's... the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, just anything. Um, <laughs> as you kind of look around, you see that you know it's it's mostly um, medical stuff. Um, things have been kept fairly well stocked but again they, they did peel it down quite a bit um there are a couple of uh what appear to be lockers probably for patients you know uh personal effects and things like that i'm down with cypher i get through it what do you mean? <laughs> i mean i mean i mean i'm down a cypher i can carry more i know that they're subtle ciphers but i, I i'm game I've right. got nothing better to do than wait for the ship to show up to move these guys so you, on. So you start searching? Yeah, let's take a look around. All right, go what ahead. What kind of adventurers are we? All right, give me an uh, intellect roll. Okay. I'm going to spend effort. Uh, 16. All right, so you find that these lockers don't lock. 
Well, that was easy. Um, because they're just storage lockers, mm -hmm. and the you know, the theory is that if you are here, they've just basically taken your effects and they put them in, in for safekeeping, mostly so they can be found. Mm -hmm. Um, less because they're, you know, trying to lock them away from other people. Um, as you go through them, one of the lockers has, um, a folded bunch of, uh, thick, heavy robes, and there's a lightsaber resting on top of it. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, this. Upgrades. Look yes. what I found. Um, what color are the robes? Brown. Brown? I don't know. I'm okay. colorblind. Man. Brown Just and black. What color is the lightsaber? Brown. Brown, Brown and black. Brown and black. <laughs> Brown and black. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's me flipping on the lightsaber is a terrible plan, but I do it anyway. So you fire up the lightsaber? I don't do it this way, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not working. It's yeah. green. <laughs> oh, it's green. The universal yeah. color that it's not a bad guy. Presumably. Right. Presumably. So there was another Jedi on board who did not and make it. And as you like go through, if you uh -huh. like pull up the robes to see that they're... Does they're it have no name tag on it? There are no name tags on it. Nobody's written on the, nobody's written written on the, on the, lapel, on the <laughs> label or anything. Um, there's no name markings. But they are black and, black and brown robes. And there's a heavy weight to one of the pockets. Oh. Oh, hey, well, when I hold so when I hold them up, it kind of, of them. it kind of does this, and so this I little, so I check the pocket. There's a glass and uh, gold pyramid in the pocket. Ooh, holocron! Is it, if that's what you say? Is this holocron? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I'm assuming. The the, stuff, do the clothes look like they'll fit one of the two people in the back of tanks? Nope. Oh, okay. So perhaps a Jedi was um, on board and has not made it out. I uh, there's a naked Jedi running around. Look out! <laughs> <laughs> I uh, can I put? Can we pull up the personnel uh, file on the on the computer terminal to see who is there and see if I recognize any of these names? Or even recognize the lightsaber, right? Because the hilts are all hmm. kind of unique or whatever. Um. Yeah. Um. Which do you want to do? You want to look at the lightsaber or the, the personnel records? Or both? I'm going to, I'm going to suggest, uh, I'm going to look at the personnel records to see if I recognize any, maybe one of these people that were on the ship previously was a Jedi. Okay. That was somebody that I, I recognize. Can we just pick it up by their, uh, by their so, title? <laughs> so you search like, by title. Search by, by, by position. Search for Jedi. Google Jedi. Yeah, actually, you They're probably could like do Lord that. Lord or Lady or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you do a search and you do a, a search for Jedi. There was indeed a Jedi stationed on the ship. Um, he was a very young knight. He's actually a little bit behind you. Um, you know, he took like, you actually recognize the name. Okay. Um, his name is Lodo. And it took him uh, two passes at the trials to get his knife. He's not a very good Jedi. Is what <laughs> Lodo the mediocre Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Be Edging nice. Under the, the cutoff. Um, but um, he was he was a a. I guess actually he's a little he was probably a little bit ahead of you, but uh, given the dates on this. He would have been a very young Jedi, like right after his trials. Was he human? Did I, did I, don't know what species he was. Um, he was a uh, near human, just one of the ones that's you know slight variation. Okay. Like I really long uh... earlobes or something. If yeah. Ansu will allow it, I will take. I'll take the. the oh, ship. I give it to you. I don't need. I don't. I don't want your Here. secret magic stuff. That <laughs> stuff, uh, I'm sure, causes radiation but poisoning. But according according to the files, he died in the in the initial attack. Mm. 
Oh, I wonder why his right. stuff was in here then. If he died, because he was being treated. Oh, uh, okay. He died from in, from injuries sustained during the initial attack. Gotcha. I see. All right. Well, the next thing I was going to try to do would be to uh, see if I sense his presence. But if he's dead, that's not going to work. So. I mean, he might be an angry lightning cloud right now. Well, that's what I was wondering. Uh, is that keeping him? Is that stuff keeping him out because it's part of his life force? I don't know. It's I only, I only, the... pra I only pretend to be a practicing follower of the force. I'm not actually a Jedi. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I just go on Christmas and Easter. <laughs> is, what does the pyramid look like? Like, is there anything weird going on with it, or it's just a golden pyramid? It's a golden glass pyramid. It's a crystal. It's a crystal pyramid with golden accents that you know make worlds and shapes. And um... as as soon as Ansu shows us the the holocron, I I say, oh a holocron, mm -hmm. and then I I ask I ask her if she'll hand it to me. I do. And uh, can I figure out how to activate this thing? Just turn it on? Yeah, you, you can figure that out pretty easily. So it, it lights up. And a uh, what appears to be his face uh, fills the air above it. Okay. Talk to him. L Lodo. What happened? I don't know if they, we've been they would know. And it, it's like we've been and you get the impression that it's not really so much like it's it, it looks like it's sort of a combination like diary and holocron interface um, so it, it, it doesn't really appear to know when exactly it is that it's talking to you from it's, it, it's kind of in a, in a voice kind of wavering with fear says they've overwhelmed us my training feels so far away I don't know what play to back, do uh, play back play back last uh, last last entry Before this, before the, before this, uh, oh, it's they like, are coming. Right. Message. <laughs> it's like the last, the last entry before that is. This is the most boring assignment I've ever been given. It's not Count Duke who's taught me so much cool stuff. <laughs> nope. He's my I, favorite. I, I should be on the front lines. This is. This is this is this is garbage. I'm I'm ready. Who cares if it took me two times to get through the trials? I got through them. I shouldn't be given this kind of garbage duty where I'm just sitting here babysitting a bunch of grain. That was his that was his famous last words. <clears throat> okay. Well, this doesn't this still doesn't really make a lot of sense. I don't understand why this would there's nothing else in here. While he's playing those back, I keep looking. Okay. I'm not expecting to find anything else, but... There really isn't anything else of interest. There's nothing of interest in here today. <laughs> and while he's looking at that, I, I probably want to try to find out the identities of my two prisoners. Okay. It is... Uh, uh, Captain Sipsong. He is a... Uh, a older human uh, probably in his early 60s okay and his uh, uh, second is uh, is a Nemoidian oh my favorite what kind of a captain and first mate don't go down with their ship and put themselves in back to tanks? This is the separatist one. Obviously, this is a problem. Garbage. I mean, they're used to droid ships, right? Nobody's going yeah. down with the ship. Well, and actually, you know, they probably filled out some of those crew positions with droids. Hmm. 
right. and Troy uh, Separatists. But they clearly left a bunch of their their actual crew to die because you know they're not decent people. Clearly, at least these two were garbage pirates. <laughs> Shady Nemoidians, uh, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so are we ready to? Uh, what's the ETA on our medical evac shuttle? Uh, they will be here in a few minutes. All right. Well, I guess it's time to start moving stuff. Yeah. All right. I pocket the holocron. I've always uh, wanted my own lightsaber. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not, but I won't take it. I mean, if the dude is really dead, then it would be important to return it to the Jedi Temple and all that. Yeah. 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 Also, what's a, what's a low-ranking Jedi doing with a, a holocron of any kind, right? Yeah. It's kind of a... Somebody trusted him pretty well. All right. Uh, so uh, um, I guess I'll have like my data pad ready. I'll let them do the pushing, the manual labor. Oh, thanks. Commander. I really appreciate that, boss. I'm going to go commander, ahead. Commander, you know. yep. I'm going to go There's, ahead. There, yeah, and you, you can see Randy in the holocron. There are like other training protocols and other things in there. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's what you would ex- stuff, yeah, yeah, it's what you expect out of a Jedi. Um, but you're not certain why somebody who had such troubles would have been given one. Can I go back to the, the, the very first entry in the holocron? Maybe determine who this person was that gave it over to Lodo? Um, you go back far enough and there aren't any entries other than his. It's, they've all been erased. Hmm. Uh, or so we think. Dun dun dun. Uh, uh, but you can see that there's like anger and arrogance that goes through the entire the entire thread. Oh, from Lodo? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah his dark side master is looking for him. Um I'm gonna go ahead and use my other uh cipher, which is a strength boost, to give me a might edge for the next hour because I'm gonna have to push these chuckleheads through through the uh Always. Are there any ciphers at all in here? Um, no. Okay. Kind of useless places. This. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, I guess we'll move out, and uh, um, I will uh, uh, make sure that the uh, our ships maybe fly. Uh, they they can come back, and I'll tell them to like escort the the shuttle. Uh, and I'll make sure that the vultures tag uh, uh, our fighters and the uh, the shuttle as friendlies. Okay. So with that, um, the shuttle docks. Um, you get those out. Um, your droids bring your ships around. Um, you get the prisoners on board. Okay. And. So um, they fall for our cockamamie bull story that <laughs> that it, they're out of. Yeah, they're all like all dejected, like. Mm-hmm. Yay, deception <laughs> works. <laughs> it's terrible. I mean, bad. by the time they find out, they'll be under guard. I don't care. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they're gonna find out in about a half an hour. But it was a terrible plan, anyways. <laughs> That's a bit. And uh, you know, we'll kind of ask them about the second attack. Uh, if there was anything they noticed, anything they could give us. They were, he says they were, uh, they were droids and they used some sort of, they, they used something, uh, they used some sort of stealth technology, something we didn't, we couldn't see them coming. Hmm. Ooh. It's a great single, uh, destroyer. That showed up on none of our scans. Wow. That sounds well, that's terrible. <laughs> like, we're going to have that problem now. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get thoroughly debriefed on it. But, but now that I'm aware of it, um, I'll have the, uh, I'll tell my droids, or all the droids, I guess, to, to pick up their, uh, their scanning. Okay. And to report anything out of the ordinary at all. Yeah, he tells you that there was, there was, that, that, you know, right before the attack, there was this 
shift in whatever, you know, was like the only distortion that they were able to pick up um, based on the, the, the stealth that was involved. What, what kind of distortion? I mean, he gives you like whatever kind of like gamma radiation, radiation. Yeah, gamma distortion <laughs> gravitational or something yeah it's like gamma gamma distortion and gravitational pull shift of x on on this axis and da 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 you know appropriate I mean, stupid I'll, whatever, I'll tell the droids to scan for it you know. right at which point they start beeping alarms great so let's get in our fighters um, so you guys go to head towards to, to do your, your your walk towards your fighters. Right. Um, I'm going to do one more intrusion. Um, no. On Keith. Oh no, I Keith! Accept. You accept. Who are you giving your XP to, Keith? So. Um, I it's one for me, and Monica, you haven't gotten one yet, I don't think, so I will give it to you. Oh, I think okay. so, because Andrew so, has not intruded upon me, except well, when I roll ones, <laughs> which is all my fault. Well, we were we're, we're getting crunched on time, I so know. It's, I was trying to I know, cram we everything back in. So as uh, you guys you, you guys start heading out towards your ship, uh, this cloud like appears and like swirls around at our talon. That's bad. That sounds um, terrible. Give me an intellect defense roll. This is oh, going to that. be this is going to be a heroic roll. So it is a difficulty eight. I have uh, uh, I'm trained to defense rolls to resist mental effects. Okay, so it lowers it by one. And then I will burn two effort, which costs me four. Yes. Which makes so it lowers it by two more. Makes it a, a difficulty five challenging roll. So I need, what do I need? A 15, 15 or, or better. Can I do anything else? Can I burn an XP to help him? Uh, you can burn an XP for a reroll when it comes to that. Okay. Um, as this thing starts to come around, if you want to, if you want to like do something forcey to help him and say that you like try to like force it away from him using the force, I will give him an asset for that. Yeah, I'll try to force push this away from him. Okay. Okay, so, so, so that makes uh, it a twelve or better. Twelve or better, here we go. I rolled a three. So I will burn that XP you just gave me with the engine yep. to re-roll, right? Okay. Or, uh, marking off my XP. And that's a nine. That's still not good enough. I will I... burn another XP if that's possible. That is possible. Yep. That is possible. This mm -hmm. seems important to resist, am I right? I think so. A 16. Yay! Yay! All right. So this thing, like, coalesces around around Adar Talon. The lightning kind of, like, crushes in around, you know, kind of kind of shoots out from around him. And you can see that it, like, like forces its way into Adar's mouth and just, like, fills him up. And Adar's eyes flash red. Um, Talon, you can, you, you can feel... Fear and hatred and uh, betrayal at being trapped here on this ship for all these years. The few survivors that were here, you snuffed out their life forces. And now you're going to snuff out the life forces of these people. And you're going to kill them one by one, starting with that Jedi. Because you hate the Jedi. And then you, you're like, no! And you force it back out of you in this expulsion of breath that leaves you feeling weak and woozy, but yourself. I barfed out the dark side, basically. Good job! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that sucked. Uh, and it, it kind of... It goes away? It kind of, like, solidifies in front of you in the shape of this figure made out of darkness. Do you, like, bro, so, do I see you that? kill everybody? Yes. Just alone trapped on the ship again. All right, I try, to, I try to do another force push this time. Okay. Pushing it away from him. Okay. Yeah, um, so what do I do? It looks pretty solid. You just go ahead. Do you? You oh, have push. If it's, if it's solid, I stab it. Yeah, yeah it, it looks, looks solid, solid this time. I was gonna say, can I take I my shot? It. Sure. 
Or, well, did you take an action already? I don't know. We haven't rolled initiative, so. Uh, he's already helped. He was helping with that, so you've got one shot. Okay. You can take. So I'm going to use a uh, careful shot okay. um, to allow me to. That lets you use intellect for your. Oh, okay, thing. right. I'm sorry. I don't need. Well, so um, I'm going to spend two effort. Out of my speed pool for um, damage. Okay. I'll be, uh, and I have uh, trained with blasters or roll ranged attack. I'm gonna re-roll that. Uh. You know what? I it's a fourteen. I'm gonna reroll it one more time and see if I can get higher. Okay. Because I'm not sure I believe. Yeah, it and with a reroll, you get to do take the best one. So. All right. Well, she I rolled roll low. higher than the fourteen. She doesn't lose it. All right. Well, I, I didn't roll higher, so I'm down two. But I'm gonna so fourteen. Uh, also with one reduced by one. Okay. Is that enough to hit? It does hit. Okay. So then with uh, so it's a heavy blaster. So it does seven. Mm-hmm. And then um, each effort. Adds three points of damage, um, and if you if you spend a turn lining up your shot, which I didn't. Okay, so then an additional six points. So that's uh, thirteen points of damage. Okay, so it takes this shot and kind of like twirls away from 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 Talon, and it fires up its lightsaber or what appears to be a lightsaber. Uh, this blade of of red force that doesn't seem to come from any actual source just out of the darkness of itself like almost like it's actually made out of lightning use the holocron like a ghostbusters trap (laughs) this steps forward try to get in between uh, talon and the entity okay and tries to swipe at it with his lightsaber or parry if it's about to be if he's about to be attacked you can you can take the attack if you want i'm just going to give all of you guys initiative all right, so what can I do to? Because it, it was not odds. expecting to get boot bumped out of talent. Um, what can you do to improve the odds of hitting? Yes. Um, oh. First of all, you are, I believe, you are trained in a lightsaber. I did one more yes. additional point of damage. I apologize. I missed that. I, I my gunner too. Okay. Um, so you are, you are. What did I put down for your lightsaber skill? Because I'm pretty certain you've got specialized. Yeah, the modifier for lightsaber is zero. The yeah, so the damage is five. Okay. What's the skill? Uh, yeah, your skill is going to uh, be up at the top. Oh, I see it is. Um. Uh, Are you so trained like, or specialized? Trained or. Yeah. Oh. It's not, uh, well, this is general force training. I don't have lightsaber say on a T- I didn't put lightsaber on there. Under no. your, under your, uh, oh, your, under your special abilities, is there anything for your lightsaber? Yeah, it says, uh, you deal, of a lightsaber master, you deal one additional point of damage with your chosen weapon, enabler, included in attacks. Okay, so it just did extra damage. All right, so yeah, um, your difficulty's already down as far as it's going to go, as far as that goes. All right, so um, just roll it. So you can put effort on it, which would be speed or might. You can use either one. I'm going to use speed. Okay. So I'm going to two effort, so that's minus five, right? Oh, right, that's minus five points. Okay. Oh, no. What'd you roll? <laughs> you roll a one. Yeah, I did. So I'm going to any... burn my... I'm gonna burn my uh, my my last XP okay. to re-roll that. Okay. All right, I got a uh, twelve on the okay. die. That's better than a one. That's better. <laughs> and that is enough to hit him at the moment. Okay. Do so I roll do damage? Five, to... So you do five points of damage. Okay. Um. Which, after having been shot, he reels back from you as well. And kind of like gets a little thin around the edges where he kind of gets a little wispy. Um, 
and he just kind of hisses. It's like electrical crackle out of his mouth. I think we're going to have to blow it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Is the shuttle clear? Shuttle is clear. Oh, okay, so we're the only ones left. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think it's Talon's turn now. Yep, yeah, and you guys I are basically to... just ready to do the walk out the airwalk. Or right. out the airlock. I'm, I'm going to try to get to my fighter. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. We should Are you run. guys just going to, like, power open both both sides of the airlock, bypassing the safety protocols? I, yeah, no safety required. We have our masks and stuff on, right? Right. right. That's how we're going to leave fast. We're going to get carried right out. <laughs> that sounds like out. a great shoot, idea. <laughs> shoot me out like a bullet toward my... It, uh, my R4 will catch me. It's <laughs> He might. Or we might just get jettisoned into space. But okay. I mean, there's powered vehicles that could come get us. True. It's not like... Yeah, it's not like you're... You're not like they can't come get you. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. So but shooting me way out into deep space sounds way better than dealing with... Uh, Force ghost. Yes, that's your. It also sounds a lot more cinematic. Yes, it does. So let's do this thing. All right. So Talon just like walks over and slams the button. Yep. <laughs> let's all go. Let's, let's take a ride. Or do you shoot it? Well, that I'll might blast. fire it. That might what? fire it locked. <laughs> okay. The button will just. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It I doesn't matter. It. The okay. quickest way I know how. Let's just say. Shoot it and then be like, you know, yes. kind of brace for the, the departure. Uh, but if you want to hit it with your hand, you can, you hit the button and the safety's override and the thing opens up and you all launch out and the wisps of the ghost kind of get stretched really thin and kind of dissipate. And there's a little bit of a flash of light and whether it's still aboard the ship or Somewhere out here in the void with you, you're not certain. Won't matter for long. Uh, your ships are, like, closing on you quickly. Uh, right. Canopies are opening, and... Uh, I tumble gracefully in. You tumble gracefully <laughs> in. Pretty... I pinwheel wildly in. <laughs> <laughs> you slam up against the side of it and, like, slide down. The uh, canopy opens up and you <laughs> clamber in. Good catch, buddy. <laughs> we'll work on your How do you get into it. yours, Randy? Do you just like force push yeah, like it's use, like nothing? I'll use force push to try to fly myself towards it. So you just like fly towards it and yeah. right in. It worked, for, it, it, worked for, it worked for General Organa, didn't it? So, hey, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, which I, still bugs me that people think that that was not canon and horrible. Totally just force push and pull. Mm-hmm. So easy. Um, so you all seat yourselves in your fighters, pull back. Um, since we are at time, um, this is actually pretty good because uh, Talon did set up the the other ships to cover your escape. I was going to do a combat here, but we are we are so close to time. We're just going to kind of thank you, Pass Talon, for helping us Both. now. Vulture droids blow stuff up, please. <laughs> yes. So the vulture droids blow stuff up. And you can see that Talon has put uh, his own spin on some of the programming because they keep doing uh, these rolls. Yeah. Like, rolls for days out there. <laughs> really, his favorite Commander. maneuver. Very pretty. Really, Commander? <laughs> that I had time. <laughs> you guys were pushing all the, the back to tanks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were. We were working really hard. Thanks. I had to put my spin on it. You know. uh, uh, but I'm <laughs> All right. So thank you guys for coming over. Yeah, thanks for being up for this last minute. This. Um, sorry it was a little rough getting started timing-wise, but thank you again. It's all uh, good. Sure. It's been a fun time. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope everybody in chat enjoyed it as well. We even have viewers. That's yeah, right. we have a bunch of viewers in Woot! chat. So just, the, you didn't have to yell at them. Um, so just a reminder for everybody who's watching now, uh, our second, our, our live table party is on its way here and I actually expect to hear them knocking on the door any minute. So we are going to take a brief break. Yep. Um, I had to eat cause I didn't actually get a, I didn't get to eat since this morning and it was bad. Um, but we're going to take a quick break, take care of some things, switch over from the setup we have now to the setup that we're going to do 
here in a minute. And then you're actually going to get to see the sequel to this game called uh, Tatooine Manhunt. Ta Tatooine Manhunt. Although I should say it's more inspired by Tatooine Manhunt than actually Tatooine Manhunt. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. So you can stay here logged in. Um, we probably are we gonna put up a, a the the block the uh, the placeholder. Or are you gonna cut the stream? I will probably cut the stream so we can uh, retitle it. Right, and it won't be enormous. Okay, so if you come oh, back and we're not here, we will be back. It probably will be closer to like five fifteen. Yeah, and I, I will probably start the back the back soon before long. But I just want to kind of break up the two videos, so we will leave briefly and I will fire it back up. Okay, thank you, Randy. Thank you, Keith. It was really nice to get to see you guys. Of course. Or I guess I could so wait this way to so play you with you guys me. again um, for, for the first time a in pleasure. this case. All right, we'll see you guys. Well, we won't necessarily see Keith and Randy next game, but we'll see anyone who wants to log in and watch us stream. Uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Yep. Right. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Good times. Thanks, Thanks so Good much. times. Bye-bye.